Reggie Theus was the Chicago Bulls number one draft pick this year. The six foot seven Nevada Las Vegas product hasn't disappointed as he's a leading scorer among all NBA rookies. For the third consecutive year, David Thompson of the Denver Nuggets has been voted a starting spot on the NBA All-Star team. Thompson's coming off his most impressive performance of the year with 32 points. The NBA on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers coast to coast. Light beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Avis, the We Try Harder car rental company. Welcome to McNichols Sports Arena in Denver, Colorado, the home of the Denver Nuggets who this afternoon play host to the Chicago Bulls. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender along with Steve Jones. And, Steve, we have two clubs coming in here seeking consistency. Gary, both teams have had their problems. Chicago down early in the season, and they've been trying to get up off the floor all season long. They have had a streak going. They look like they were going to get it turned around, and they've been down. Denver, on the other hand, got off to their usual quick start, and they sputtered. And they have been trying to catch the fast-rising Kansas City Kings ever since then, but they have it turned around. They're playing better basketball. Well, Chicago has defeated Denver on the two previous occasions, winning right here in the Nichols Arena for the first time. They won a big game here, that seemed, to, and it seemed as though they had things turned around, won a back-to-back -back series, played some good basketball, and then they struggle again. They've been back down, and they're trying to get it back up. Well, Artis Gilmore, you visited with him. What would you ask him? Well, I got a chance to talk with the artists and ask him if they would really get their situation turned around. Yes, Steve, we've got the things that we will turn it around. And me personally, I feel that there are some things that I've got to do as a captain, as a leader, and influence or encourage our guys to come out and play hard. I know we're lacking a few things, but yet and still with the things that we do have, We've got to take advantage of it. When you talk about leadership, do you think you can apply that type of pressure and make the Scott Mays, Mickey Johnson, and Wilbur Hollins play up to the potential they did a couple of years ago? Well, n not necessarily apply pressure, but I think in terms of uh, convincing the guys what it's all about to come out and play hard and play to the up to their potentials and hopefully get a good result, so in results. Right. Well, let's talk about you for a quick second. You're going to go to the All-Star game again, big fella, and I know you're always happy to participate in those things. You're looking forward to being in Detroit. Absolutely. Uh, as any player in the NBA would say, it's, it's a great honor to be chosen or selected to the All-Star team, and once again, I'm really happy to be a part of it. On the other hand, George McGinnis will also be playing in the NBA All-Star Game, which will be televised right here on CBS, along with his teammate David Thompson. McGinnis coming over, of course, from the Philadelphia 76ers this year in a trade with Bobby Jones and Ralph Simpson. He's a big, powerful man at six foot eight, And he's been involved in games this year where the Nuggets have been losing close ones. 17 games they've lost by six points or less. I asked George about those close losses. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a um, characteristic of, of our team so far. And, um, you know, them are the losses I think that after the season uh, gets down to the wire that we're going to look back and feel awful bad about. But uh, the one thing that uh, I feel positive about them losses is that we stuck in there and we hung in there and we battled. You need to stay around to the end more often. You fouled out, I think, 12 times in 11 of those games your team has lost. Yes, I've had a problem with fouls this year. And, uh, and we've had a problem uh, winning them ball games. Uh, because of the fact that our team goes to me a lot. And uh, hopefully uh, today I'll be able to stay in the game and, 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 and uh, make a positive effect on the team. And so we're ready to go as both these clubs at center circle. Our officiating crew will be Lee Jones, the crew chief, Terry Durham, and Hugh Hollins. And you see the starting lineup in Chicago says, a starting five, well, they haven't had it for a long time. Wilbur Holland at one guard, and Scott May is starting to the other forward. He has the ball right now, along with Mickey Johnson. This is Johnson who had 33 points in a game earlier this year against Denver. Rebound, Bobby Wilkerson will set it now for the Denver Nuggets. This is David Thompson. He'll be joined out there by Charlie Scott at the guard spots. Bobby Wilkerson, George McGinnis, the forwards, and Dan Issel will be in the middle. Inside, Scott, and it's turned over. Scott May comes away with it. Chicago has really been tough on Denver. They played excellent basketball. All the games have been close. The problem for Chicago is they've been a little lacking in the first year as far as offensive firepower go. They went down, and 
now they have begun to put it together. They've got their best offensive unit out on the court now. We should have an excellent offensive basketball game. David Thompson inbounds the ball to Charlie Scott. Scott averaging just over 12 points a game. That's a career low for him, but he's contributed in other ways, particularly in the assist department. And we have a traveling call on David Thompson. Thompson was somewhat sensational Friday night. He had a tremendous game, probably his best all-around game of the season. He rebounded well, passed the ball well, played defense well, just did everything that was asked for a player of his ability. He had six dunks in that game. He blocked a shot that everybody's talking about. Here's Gilmore backing in on Issel. Got May. May tried to come away with it, and we have a loose ball foul. There's a problem for Issel, trying to keep Gilmore from forcing the ball inside. Well, you know, they were teammates in Kentucky in the ABA, and Dan knows Artis Gilmore as well as anyone, but Gilmore is just able to out-maneuver and overpower Dan Issel, and that's where his advantage is. Mickey Johnson picked up the foul. That's the first of the game. Just underway, first period. Issel outside. Rebound, Theus. Off to Wilbur Holland. Holland started this year as the starting guard in the first 21 games. He's back in there now. Out it comes to Scott. Back is Theus. Scott having trouble, and he's going to have to reset. Nice pass to Issel. And that's what Charlie Scott's been doing. Well, Charlie Scott's been giving the ball up well, and early in the season they hurt him because he wasn't looking at the hoop. Now he's turned it around and gotten some offense going himself. So the Nuggets got on the scoreboard. Here's Theus, six foot seven. Inside to Gilmore, it's seven two against six nine. <laughs> Rebound, McGinnis. McGinnis, what a horse he is on the board. Well, George McGinnis is all that Denver has ever needed in the sense that they have a big, strong guy who can take it to the hole just like that. Boy, he went around Mickey Johnson like he was standing still. He may have done a little two-step. He got away with that little NBA shuffle, and they got the hoop, and they got a four-point lead. Four nothing, Denver. Theus averaging 16.2 with the basketball. Scott May, he hasn't played a lot, but boy, they're glad to have him back after starting the first game, then undergoing knee surgery, second time in two years. Johnson, rebound, Wilkerson, and we have another foul coming up. Mickey Johnson, and he's picked up two in a hurry. Well, that's been a problem for Mickey Johnson. He's an offensive player, and his game sort of goes the way his offense goes. He made two tries at the hoop. He missed them both, and he picked up fouls afterwards after trying to get the ball. As an end result, 54, Mark Landsberger chucks in and replacing Mickey Johnson. Johnson had that sensational game of 33 points against Denver earlier this year, but he's having some back trouble. Well, he, he's having some back trouble, uh, maybe more in his head than anything else. He is kind of a psychological player, and when everything is going well for him, he plays well. Wilkerson, who has been up and down, uh, he had a streak with his offense was really going well, and now he's shooting about 35% from the field and, and, and really struggling. He's in a shooting slump. This guy has started the last 15 games at forward, and Denver's gone 10 and 5 during that stretch, so he's fit, it, fit in very well at that forward spot if you're playing a guard most of last year. Gary Gilmore. It's so important to have that team chemistry and with them in the line if they have it. Boy, there's something that's impossible to stop. <laughs> Artis Gilmore, and now it's 5-2, Denver. David Thompson, you can see he has the left leg wrapped. He's had all kinds of nagging injuries. Little groin problems, a little knee injury. He got knocked out early in the season, and that hurt him a bit. But as he said, on Friday night, he played his best all-around game. His leg was wrapped in, too. There's a the move by David Thompson. All NBA, and for the third straight year on the starting All-Star squad on next Sunday's game. 7-2 Denver, Gilmore against Issel. Nice move. A la Chamberlain, a little finger roll inside, and that keeps Chicago close. Artis Gilmore comes in here, fourth in the NBA in scoring, just under 25 a game. Wilkerson out to Scott. They're moving the ball very well. Thompson. Another assist for Scott. Thompson hits outside, and Denver's off and rolling. I see the thing that Chicago does not want to let Denver do is get a quick start here in their home court, even though they haven't been as devastating in the past. Well, you can see Landsberg and McGinnis going up. There's not a lot of room when they go up. McGinnis showing great speed, getting that ball down to Thompson. I don't think David Thompson was quite ready to handle that pass, but Scott is. Oh. Now, Charlie Scott. He lost his confidence last year as a shooter, didn't he? Well, there's no question about it. He's playing in a new situation coming from Boston to Los Angeles. He tried to fit in with Kareem and some other people there and just did not look at the basket, hurt himself, but he's back right on top. He's Charlie Scott that we knew at Phoenix and Boston. A lot of cars are like pizzas. To get a lot on them, you've got to pay a lot extra. 
but not the 1979 Chevy Chevette. It comes with a lot already on it. Chevette ignores the pizza principle. With it, you get an AM radio, reclining bucket seats, console, white striped tires, and more, all at no extra cost. So avoid the pizza principle. Hi, Richie. Get a car with a lot already on it. Get the best-selling hatchback in America, Chevy Chevette. It's a lot of car for the money. Hi, Richie. Hi, kid. The Miller people promised me a case of light beer if I could keep this ball spinning for the length of this commercial. Now, I'm not one to show up, but I do just about anything for a few light beers. You see, light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling, so I can stay loose. But the thing I like best is the taste. And I believe at this time that somebody here owes me a case of that taste. Thanks a lot, boys. See you around. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hi, Charlie. Three unidentified 19-inch color TV pictures, each the best of its brand. Over a thousand people saw them and picked the one with the best overall picture. They didn't pick America's biggest seller, Zenith, or the second biggest, RCA. Over 60% picked the 19-inch Sylvania Superset. Over 60%. We're not the biggest, but a lot of people think we've got the best picture. The Sylvania Superset. Larry Costello, the Chicago Bulls, and Denver's off and moving. Steve, they hit five of the first six shots. That's firepower in the right places, and when you only miss one, and Chicago's two for ten, that'll give you a lead. They're ahead by seven, eight, ten to go, and they're trying to apply some pressure in the backcourt. Wilbur Holland, who many people are reminded of Dick Barnett when they watch him play, that little jumper, the way he picks his legs up. He's a great opportunity player. You know, if he could get down in a fast break situation, anytime he can go to the basket, he's going to get a chance to get to the line or get a hoop. Well, Charlie Scott, guarding a little too aggressively on that play, picks up the foul, his first foul. First team foul against Denver, and Holland will inbounds it from the near side. Well, a problem here, you know, we talk about a hand-checking rule, and Charlie Scott has his hands on him. He's not happy. It's not that much contact. Gilmore. Landsberger, boy, this guy's a tough rebounder. That shot will count, and he's been fouled. A chance for a three-point play. Landsberger, his first basket. You know this Landsberger this year had 15 offensive rebounds in one game. That's the top of the NBA. That's the top. You know, that's way ahead of uh, Moses Malone, who's the offensive rebounding leader. But this kid is down and deep, and George McGinnis is going to have to be cognizant of that and box him. He's got good offensive moves in close around the basket. That's where he tries to work. Foul picked up by McGinnis. His first is an 11-6 game. Denver. Great point play. And now we have something away from the ball. Lee Jones. Says that Scott May reached in and grabbed, so he picks up the foul. That's his first, the third team foul now against Chicago. You talk about the hand-checking rule, and again, it comes into play. No one's really hindering Thompson's progress, but they don't want the players reaching and touching. Riley Scott, look at that Landsberger get up, would you? The former Arizona State standout. Off to Holland, Reggie Theus. Theus at 6'7", he's a handful for Thompson, but he walked with the ball. Yeah, he did a little bunny hop. He got away with it, and uh, then Lee... Lee Evans whistled him, and he's a little surprised. Larry Costello, he's hot about it, but then he's got a lot of problems to be hot with. Chicago started rolling, and then all of a sudden, they've fallen back into the problems that plagued them early in the year. They just haven't had that consistency. Again, it's trying to get out of some difficulty. He doesn't do it. Off to Landsberger. The Theus. Rebound by Scott May, and he can't get it down. Look at him, horse the boards. Landsberger gets it in. Anytime you get three opportunities, you're going to get it down. Scott May, who's missed two layups on timing problems, has been there, and it's important that they get as many opportunities to hoop as they can. Well, after leading 11-4, to four, it's been cut to 11-8 to eight now. Issel trying to answer outside. Wilkerson. Good effort. Uh, Denver came right back with the same thing. You've got to box, and either team doing a good job of it early, and it cost them hoops on second and third tries. Chicago, historically, has been tough on that front line rebounding-wise, but Denver that time getting the better of it. Here's Gilmore with this, will try to hang in there with him. He likes that move, and he got it. He's got a chance for a three-point play. Well, an interesting thing about this matchup is normally they try to give Issel some help. He's, uh, Gilmore is just as dominant in that offense as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You'll see he works down and deep, and once he gets down in there and leans in, there's not much that a smaller Dan Issel can do. He's on the line with the chance to get a three-point play and bring Chicago within two points. That's the first foul on Issel, and Issel comes away with it. Earlier this year, Gilmore had 31 points and 11 rebounds in a game played right here in the Nichols Arena. He's out to maybe duplicate that this afternoon. McGinnis, Landsberger. 
the interesting thing about Gilmore is he outscored every center that he plays against. Here's Theus. Well, this guy's going to be around a long time, isn't he? Oh, he's, a, he's one fine prospect, and all he can do is continue to get better. He sees the court well. He scores good. Over Holland and to Gilmore. They're going to get the big guy, and why not? Oh, that'll hurt you right there. That'll hurt more in your pride when you get down in deep like that and get mugged that way. And all of a sudden, we have a one-point game, 13 to 12. Denver on top. Remember, they led 11-4. Here's this a little pushing there as they set up the pick. David Thompson, a mismatch. Thompson's going to take him inside. He got away with it, and he's fouled. A lot of three-point plays here in the early going. Well, we talked earlier about David Thompson adjusting to the guard position. That time he recognized right away he had a mismatch, went on Gilmore and went right to the hoop. He got him a two-point play and a chance to get three and build a lead up to a four-point lead. Reggie Theus picked up the foul, and already Thompson has seven points in the game. For Theus, his first foul, 16-12, Denver. Inside again. He tried to front him on that play. Gilmore can't handle it. Boy, Larry is really upset. I think he feels they were reaching in on Artis a little. Well, they made a fine lob pass inside, and Gilmore looked like he had an easy stuff, and all of a sudden the ball was free, and they, you know, you always look for some help from the officials in that case. We have 5.20 to go, first period. Thompson, he hit one from there earlier. Rebound, Holland, they're getting only one track at it now. Holland on a break, he loves to run. How's that for a play? That's a fine offensive break that time. He was looking at the hoop and they came to him. He drew the defense and gave to Scott May. He gets his first hoop, Chicago's hanging tough. And we're gonna have a timeout called by Denver. They don't like how things are happening right now. 16-14, Denver with the lead at 5-0-1 as Chicago's come roaring right back in this one. Avis Super Saver rates. Special rates that save you money. Like our seven-day See America rate. Look out, L.A. Bye! Or our special holiday rates. We get to go to Grandma's house. Yeah! And on weekends, Avis Super Saver rates can save you up to 50% off our weekday rates. 50% off? Up to 50%. See you Monday. <laughs> Call our toll-free number or your travel consultant. Some restrictions do apply. There's a whole new direction, a whole new point of view. Everybody's out going, doing what they love to do. That's why now you'll find the age of 7-Up is here. Because we love that crisp, refreshing taste, so light and crystal clear. Moving up, riding up, looking up, sailing up. America is turning 7-Up, reaching up, hiking, hiking up, up, feeling up, bike it up. America is turning 7-Up. Agent Brent Whitlock talks about family insurance. You have an obligation to that individual when he buys an insurance policy from you to back up what you tell him. Uh, you're selling him a service. It's an intangible. The only way you can prove that you're, you're worth what you say you are or your company is as good as you say it is is to be there when he needs you and provide the service that he deserves. Like a good neighbor. All the stars will come out for CBS Sports exclusive live coverage of the NBA All-Star Game from Detroit. With the best in the East taking on the best in the West, you'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Larry Brown, his fifth year as a coach at Denver, it's not been an easy year for him. No, it's been up and down, normally off to a quick start, his teams, and they have played with a lot of consistency, and this year they have been up and down. He's trying to figure out what the problem is so they could get back in first place, a place that his teams are accustomed to being. Well, Denver looked like they were off and running. All of a sudden, Chicago battled back within two as we pick up the action just inside. Five minutes to go, first period. David Thompson. Well, when he hits those, they didn't even ripple the cord, you know what? And top try there, he's got nine points, and they're going to go back to what got him that lead, Thompson scoring. Nine for him, eight for Gilmore, the leading scorers thus far in the early going of this game. Scott, a tough defensive man at 6'6 six, six against 6'7 six, Theus. Landsberger. 16 seconds on the shot clock as Theus trying to rotate around, and that's a tough shot. Off balance, couldn't get it. They had enough time to get that ball up, but he forced one. Well, that's one thing about rookies. you got to learn where the shot is. Scott goes down the lane, and he gives it away. Oh, did that get rejected, huh? 
Artis Gilmore comes in here 10th in the NBA and block shots. And there's Holland, and Holland, boy, he just loves to run at every opportunity. He's trying to get down. He's always got his nose on that hoop. He's looking for a chance to score. With him in the line of Chicago, seem to be trying to run a little bit more, Gary, and they've, they've been getting more points out. 18-16. They've been outscored what now? 14 to 2? Yeah, they, they have really put a good run together. They've allowed Denver only one shot and they got another break. Holland sets it up. Landsberger, a lot of missed shots inside, but it's going to be Chicago's basketball. Let's go back and watch Gilmore block that shot inside. Now, this is always nice to have a big guy standing around to swat those flies. He fools Scott. Scott fools him right there, but Issel can't get up high enough or quick enough, and Gilmore puts it right back down. George McGinnis comes in. Also, Robert Smith has checked in along with Kim Hughes. Three changes now for Larry Brown's team. Gilmore, Hughes blocks it. Nice play by Kim Hughes. They called him the Spider-Man. That was an excellent block by Hughes. Gilmore thought he had a lot more time to put the top on that one. McGinnis shows him how much time you need. George McGinnis with four points. 2016 now as all of a sudden Denver in some trouble. They start to straighten themselves out a little bit. Robert Smith, there's a guy that kind of grows on you the more you watch him play out of Nevada, Las Vegas. Only 5-11. Scott May picked up by Tom Boswell, who's checked in, and I think they had that time too much on the ball. They couldn't handle that one. Well, they had a lot of defensive pressure. He made a tough pass inside, and Wilbur Holland just was surprised and not ready to handle it, so Denver gets to handle the ball, and they got a chance to increase their lead with three minutes left in the first period. That against Denver's their third turnover. Tom Boswell, what a find he's been this year after coming from Boston. McGinnis changed the shot. And an offensive foul on McGinnis. McGinnis has had foul trouble all year long. Has already picked up his second. Yeah, he told Landsberger, no, you don't get this block, big guy. You'll see him working here. He's going to go up. He commits himself a little soon. Landsberger's right there. He just takes that big left arm and rips him away. McGinnis has fouled out at 12 games this year, and the team has lost 11 of them. Here's Wilbur Holland into Gilmore against Kim Hughes. He faked him up, and he got the foul. That's the tough thing about Gilmore. You go up with him trying to anticipate and he'll make you pay for it. Well, the worst problem is you let him get down in deep and once he gets in there, you know you're in a lot of trouble. So you've got to try and commit a little bit early. He leaves his feet. The important thing about Gilmore is in watching him this first couple of years in the NBA, he was not as confident. Larry, Com Larry Costello is yelling at Lee Evans. He wants more calls down in deep, but Gilmore was not as confident as he is now offensively. He feels as though he can score on anybody. He works to get that position. He wants the ball down in deep. Gilmore now with nine points. Nine of the Bulls, now should say 10 of the Bulls, 18 points. Two point lead for Denver. Artis Gilmore has been very, very consistent this year as he's been in his entire career in the NBA. Here's Tom Boswell. Well, he's found a home here, hasn't he? Well, there's no question. They got a big find in Boswell. Boston had turned him loose and didn't know that he was as good a player as he is. He's gotten a chance to play under a different coach and a different style of play. Again, it's hustling back, able to break up what looked like might be an easy two inside. It's John Mengelt will now check into the guard spot, and Reggie Theus will come out. The thing that Denver would like to do is get Chicago down and keep them down, but they have not been able to do so. Bobby Wilkerson's going to check in, and Charlie Scott takes a blow. So we're going to have Wilkerson operating in the guard spot this time. Wilkerson, Smith, McGinnis, Kim Hughes, and Tom Boswell. That's the five in the game now for Denver. Two minutes to go, first period. McGinnis, George McGinnis coming in here eighth in the NBA in scoring. He is 10th in steals and ninth in rebounding. Not too bad. A great all-around player, and since he's left Philadelphia, he's been able to show people that George McGinnis is not dead. There they go inside again, but that's not going to count. We got a pushing off foul that time. Right, he was going to make sure that there was no one to hold him and encumber him as he went in, and he pushed off with that right arm and knocked Kim Hughes back about five steps. That's the first foul on Gilmore. John Brown getting ready to come in for Chicago. Boswell. Boswell had a good game earlier this year against Chicago with 12 points, 14 rebounds. Here's McGinnis trying to get it outside, and it's going to be Denver's ball. Also, Ollie Johnson comes in. So two new forwards, John Brown, Ollie Johnson, Artis Gilmore, and Scott May will come out. You know, May has got to have a problem with conditioning. He hasn't played all that much. He has not played much, but he's a hard-working guy. Most of those guys from Indiana keep themselves in pretty good shape. He has just got to get his game, get himself in game shape. And they didn't get it off. The shot clock runs out. Again, us couldn't get the ball inside, and that's the fourth turnover against Denver. 22-18, the Nuggets. 
Denver, an impressive win here Friday night, breaking a three-game losing streak. They defeated the Los Angeles Lakers. Holland to John Brown. Brown, who a week ago today got a starting call against Cleveland. Here's Mengel, who's playing with a bad knee, strained ligaments in that right knee. Holland with Robert Smith on him. And look at McGinnis box up. Uh, again, that's a dimension that Denver has not had, a big, strong guy to go up and get that rebound when you need it. Again, it's playing with the two fouls. Kim Hughes picked up from the New Jersey Nets as a free agent. Kim does a very good job within his limits, and look at that, a left-hander shooting a right-handed hook. Well, he stays in his limitations, and that time he had a mismatch on Robert Smith. He could have just rolled inside and stuffed it, and he elected that right-hand hook and got it down. Kim's been very popular here in the Mile High City. 24-18, Landsberger with McGinnis on him. Mengelt wide open. Rebound, Boswell. Look at Smith go from the running Rebels in the Battle of Las Vegas. He's at home in that situation. Boswell tries to follow, and Landsberger, a real workhorse, comes away with it. Landsberger done an excellent job on the boards at both ends for Chicago, limiting them to one shot, getting the offensive rebound, and keeping them close. They're going for the last shot now this first period as we have 10 seconds remaining in the first period. Seven seconds. Then Gelt with six seconds. He got this one. And they worked that play to perfection, used all the time. Denver's not even going to get a chance to get the ball up. So the Denver Nuggets, who got off very quickly in this game on an 11-4 lead, have a four-point lead after the first period of play. Chicago, who's won the first two meetings this year, giving them all they want. The first thing you notice about the big shaver is that the handle is hollow, practically worthless. Bic put the money into their top quality bonded stainless steel blade. That's why Bic can charge only 19 and three quarter cents a shaver. And each one gives you days and days of close, comfortable shaves. The Bic shaver, hollow handle, superior blade, incredible price. Ladies and gentlemen, RCA presents The Great Rebate. With your assistance, The Great Rebate will put a check from RCA into your pocket. Purchase one of these 22 selected RCA color TVs and get from $25 on this XL100 up to $100 on this color track. Yes, get up to $100, like magic, direct from RCA. But hurry before The Great Rebate disappears. See your participating RCA dealer today. Hi, I'm David Thompson of the Denver Nuggets. And I'm a long way from NBA action. Here in Africa, like a lot of places around the world, the Peace Corps is alive and well, helping people in need. People went out of their way to help me when I was a kid. And that's what the Peace Corps is asking you to do. Help someone and you'll help yourself. Join the Peace Corps. This message is brought to you by the Ad Council in cooperation with the NBA. Well, in that first period of play, it was Artis Gilmore for Chicago scoring half their points, 10 of the 20, after it looked like Denver might be running off and hiding somewhere. They got off to an excellent start, and Chicago came right back, went down into their strength, and Gilmore delivered. They need to stay close in the ball game. During that timeout, Larry Costello spent a lot of time diagramming their 3A off their one set. We'll see how good their offensive execution is. Artis what does Gilmore, that all mean? That means score a basket. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 24-20s. We pick up the second period. You saw Gilmore on the bench getting a breather. We have Mengelt, Holland, Landsberger, Brown, and Ollie Johnson to the lineup. And Hughes trying that right-handed hook again that he hit earlier. Here comes Holland. Charles Dudley getting ready to come in for the Bulls. Mengelt, one for two from the field in that first period. Ollie Johnson out to John Brown, who they picked up from the Atlanta Hawks for number two draft pick in 1980. Mengelt, a tough guy. Boy, he got that one kicked out of there. <laughs> two on two. Anthony Roberts, number 21 in the lineup now. He's the guy battling back from some virus trouble where he lost 25 pounds. Well, John Mingelt on that last offensive series, he was going to get that up. That was his play no matter what. <laughs> Kim Hughes just smothered him. Chicago's going to work again. He never saw the basket. Holland with Hughes on him, a little mismatch, and now they reset it. David Thompson picking up Holland is Ollie Johnson. Inside the Landsberger working on Hughes. Fall away. 
Anthony Roberts has got it. Boy, you can tell Roberts lost some weight. He's down in weight, isn't he? Uh, he's been down. He's been coming back. He played his best offensive game, actually all-around game against Los Angeles. All the Nuggets played well. They were happy to see him come back. Robert Smith was doing the same thing on Friday night. Smith, you know, didn't hit his first three, but he's got confidence. He came back, and he popped that one in for his first two points. 26-20. The Nuggets by six. John Brown with Tom Boswell on him. Wilbur Holland, that little jumper of his. Intimidation that time from Smith, who was on him tough. Chicago seems to have struggled. They've bogged down. They've tried to come down with the set offense, and they've not gotten the same type of effort with Gilmore out of the lineup. When they run, they seem to get easier hoops. You know, Gilmore almost averages 42 minutes a game, so he's not going to be out of there very long. Here's Boswell, Landsberger on him. Smith and Holland, six foot against six, 5'11". Two seconds on the shot clock, and Hughes got it. Boy, he knew the time remaining. He wasted no time. Well, the crowd was yelling, and the only thing he could do was respond. He got a low pass, but he got a high jump. Kim Hughes with his second bucket, 28-20. And Gelt, they're not getting the ball inside, and the reason, number 53's out of there. Here's Hughes again, and he's taken over in the absence of Gilmore. Well, he has done an excellent job of rebounding again, giving the Nuggets a chance to get down and get the opportunity shot. Ali Johnson with the steal. Mengel doesn't see the ball, and it's off of Mengel. Fine heads-up play by Kim Hughes, who was able to bat it off of him. Charles Dudley now checks in for Chicago. Leaving will be Wilbur Holland, so Mengel and Dudley will be in the backcourt. The thing that Larry Costello should be aware of is that his team is losing a little bit of the momentum, and certainly I'm sure he's going to make some changes to try to, to get that right. If they had it going, and staying in a close ball game, they have not scored since the top of the period. Chicago losing on Friday night against San Diego, and there's David Thompson. You didn't hear from him for a while, but he's come back now. He has 11 points for the afternoon. And all of a sudden, Denver has jumped up to a 10-point lead. They lead it 30 to 20 with 9.16 to go before halftime. A perplexed, concerned Larry Costello. We offered this $100 bill to anyone who's stronger than Eastman 910 adhesive. Just a drop of Eastman 910 here and here. Pull it apart and the money's yours. There, it's only been one minute. Hold! Oh, oh! Come on, no. <laughs> For the really tough jobs around your house, put your money on Eastman 910 adhesive. It's stronger than you are. If the football player can't do it, right, no one can. You're smiling and all the while your heart just pounds away. The train in builds and ends on this fateful day. It's the Pepsi generation face to face. At a frog jump in race. Come on, come on, come on and have a Pepsi day. Come on, come on, come on and taste the Pepsi way. Come on, come on and have a Pepsi day. Introducing the new Chevy Love four wheel drive model. Motor Trend Magazine's Truck of the Year. It's tough and economical. Love's estimated MPG is 23. That's better than many cars. It also has independent front suspension, a tight turning circle, plus higher ground clearance than many full-size four-wheel drive pickups. Four-wheel drive Chevy Love. Tough enough for timber country. Tough and economical for you. Chevy trucks, built to stay tough. Hi. Someday, I play a mother with a deaf son. Watch and Your Name is Jonah, the Sunday night movie special at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Denver with a 10-point lead, and Chicago has the big guy back in there, Artis Gilmore. Without him in there, their offense just wasn't hitting on all cylinders. They, they certainly bogged down, and when they came to their set offense, they had no place to really get a hoop. Now he's got Gilmore back in, and they come right back into him. He goes to work. And Artis Gilmore already has 10 points in the game. This foul going to be Kim Hughes picking up the personal foul, and that's his second. Bread and butter, that's what they always say. Go to it, and he gets it right down in here, and he knows where the hoop is. And he knows he's got a strong advantage over Kim Hughes. He just overpowers him. He has two shots coming. Artis Gilmore. I'll tell you, for a big guy, he shoots very well from the line, 76%. He is the number one field goal shooter in the NBA with 59% coming into the day. Well, Gary, I think all the big guys now realize that you can get cheap points with no one guarding you at the free throw line. They're taking a little bit more time to shoot those free throws a little bit better. 
Gilmore pressured by Ollie, or I should say Thompson pressured by Ollie Johnson. Here it comes to Dudley. Dudley out of Golden State. Not much of a score, but he's been able to contribute as far as quarterbacking this basketball team. Again, notice the difference when Chicago has the ball and Gilmore in the game. They try to push the ball up the floor. Look out, and Gilmore is hammered as he goes up. Hammered by Kim Hughes, and Hughes now with three personals. May have caught a finger in the eye on that play. Dan Issel and Charlie Scott are coming in now. Well, a lot of bodies underneath, and Gilmore gets that rebound off the Landsberger effort. He keeps it alive. Again, Hughes doing the only thing he can, comes right over the top. You see the hand go across the face there. Gilmore is down. I'm certain that he's all right. He's taking another breather. Well, we're looking forward to seeing this guy in the All-Star Game. A week from today, February 4th, the NBA All-Star Game from the Silver Dome in Pontiac. And, of course, McGinnis and David Thompson will be starting in that game. We have be their big guy, and it should be a good one. We'll have an interesting matchup because Artis Gilmore is an excellent rebounding center, and he's going to go against the best in the business against Moses Malone, and we'll see when they get into basketball games just how they play inside. Clear out. It's their territory, <laughs> right? <laughs> Dan Issel, 44 in, along with Charlie Scott, who checked back in for the Denver Nuggets, who lead it 30-22, to 30-23. to 23. Well, with uh, Gilmore going as well as he is, I'm not sure that Dan Issel would like to come back and take some of that abuse. The big guy is really overpowering people down in deep. 13 points for Artis Gilmore, Anthony Roberts. Their second first-round draft pick last year and a very good player. Thompson, they will not count. He's been fouled by Dudley, but before the shot. But Dudley, he can't believe it, and he's got to have a conversation about it, but he was right there again. You know, you talk about that hand-checking rule, and sometimes the players just don't realize when they have their hands on the other guy, and uh, the whistle is blown, and it's disbelief. There's no play at all. And Charlie Scott is backed into Mengeld. He's picked up a personal foul, and Scott now with two. A problem for Charlie Scott, playing excellent basketball, and you'll see Mengel, he takes a little bit of a dive, but Scott has not been able to stay in the ball game a lot because he has had foul problem. That's been the story with McGinnis, and they've lost a lot of close ones with the big guys out of the lineup. Gilmore, tough shot, Anthony Roberts goes up for it. Anthony Roberts was out six weeks with that virus, had his best game Friday night coming in against Los Angeles. Here's Issel, out it comes to Thompson. Nice play by Thompson. He faked him out of there beautifully. That's one of the few times you see David Thompson give a head fake and a ball fake, and he got him off his feet, got an easy hoop. It looked like the Nuggets had wasted a lot of good penetration for nothing, and they still come away with the hoop. 32-23, Theus is getting ready to come back in again for Chicago. Ollie Johnson into Gilmore. They tried to front him, and they got away with it. Well, that time he didn't have the ball. He had excellent position, and fortunately for Denver, he deflected the ball out of bounds. Larry Costello is going to change his lineup. Dudley comes out, and Scott May comes back in. Scott May in. That's the sixth turnover against Chicago, and they've been up among the leaders in that department all year long. Scott Thompson, Issel, Anthony Roberts, and George McGinnis for Denver at this stage of the game at the 726 mark of the second period. At halftime, have an interview with Kevin Lockery of the New Jersey Nets as McGinnis horses one in. Boy, is he strong. Well, the important thing about having that kind of strength is also having control, and he was off balance, but strong enough to get the ball to the hoop and get the basket. Eight points from McGinnis. Landsberger, the basket will count, and we have a foul coming up against Charlie Scott. I think Scott maybe thought he was run into. Well, you know, one of those times when a guy wants to stay in the red. Charlie Scott right there, but not quite there. Landsberger leaves his feet. If Charlie Scott moved over just a little bit more and not bailed out, he probably would have got the call to go his way. Tom Boswell, 41, checks in. Bobby Wilkerson will check back in. Charlie Scott with three personal fouls. Both he and Hughes have three, so Scott will leave at the stage. Again, see, that's a problem that Charlie Scott has had. It's not that he's not played excellent basketball. It's just time out on the floor, and you can't do anything from the bench, Gary. There's Landsberger, completes a three-point play, and it's 34-26. Landsberger now with seven points. This game has kind of a flavor that they had to it. First time they met here, Denver dominated and had the lead, but they could not really get a big enough lead and bury them, and Chicago came back in the second half. See Theus, those long arms reaching in. Wilkerson, well, he's been in the shooting slump, but that ought to help his confidence a little bit. Oh, well, anytime you can feather him from out there, you know you're going to put up a couple more balls, and we'll see what happens, but he's... He's a player that really tries hard. He works real hard. Good things will happen for him because he puts a lot of effort out there. Ten-point lead. Scott May, tough shot. Rebound, Issel. Issel off to Boswell. Boswell will hold it up. To McGinnis. 
yards inside, rejected by Gilmore. <laughs> That's strength against strength there. <laughs> You can't Wilkerson bring, again. You can't bring that cheap stuff in there, so they go to the outside, and Bobby Wilkerson, he delivers. You go in there, and they test you, don't they? <laughs> they trick you. What they do is they turn their back, make you think it's open, and all of a sudden they turn around and knock it away. 38-26, six minutes to go. Second oh, pair. What a move oh. by Reggie Theon. Oh. That's a little Houdini. Now you see it, now you don't. Just little flashes like that. It gets you excited about this young rookie. He is big at 6'7", and he can move inside. Here's McGinnis out to Issel. Makes Gilmore, and he's got an off-balance shot. You know, Issel's had a tough time finding his role on this team. Well, he struggled. You know, basically, he's an outside player for most of the big centers. Chicago double dribbles and blows an excellent offensive opportunity. So we have the ball turned over by Chicago. Let's look again at Theus's move. A little magic right there. He showed Bobby Wilkerson the baseline and spun away clean, and Chicago has a 10-point disadvantage. Owens Corning would like to help you understand insulation R values. R stands for resistance to heat flow. It's the right way to measure insulating power, not thickness. Look, it takes about 18 feet of stone to give you an R value of R19, but only 15 inches of wood and six inches of this Owens Corning fiberglass insulation. So check for R value. The higher the R value, the greater the insulating power. Want to know about insulation? Ask the experts. Ask Owens Corning. All across our land, Gunk! people Gunk! know our brand. Come on, you guys. can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Spark plugs by AC. Say that, men. You can trust AC spark plugs. And remember AC filters to help protect your engine from dirt and dust. Right, Ben? Ben? Kids! Drive through dirt and dust. Good filters are a must. You can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Filters by AC. Plugs and filters by AC. Magnavox is handing out money during the big Magnavox annual sale. Come in now for a great deal on these Magnavox Touch Tune Color TVs and get a rebate right on the spot. Save on decorator stereos, save on Magnavox component systems, and get a rebate right on the spot. And save even more on remote control special bonus offer. The most exciting Magnavox annual sale ever because Magnavox is handing out money. Next Sunday, mark this down on your sports calendar, the NBA All-Star Game from the Silver Dome and Pontiac. Three players here this afternoon will be checking in there, Artis Gilmore along with George McGinnis and David Thompson. The Dr. Julius Irving will be matching up against his former teammate McGinnis in that game. Firepower, that's what we'll have at that All-Star Game, and it really should be exciting. The East against the West, 145 next Sunday. Ten-point lead now for Denver. Five and a half minutes to go before intermission. Dan Issel to Wilkerson. Broken up nicely, and Issel very alertly picks it off. Well, Dan Issel got that basket that time before. He tried to get Gilmore off his feet and didn't get it, and threw the ball up, and Chicago got it back and wasted it, and he got it off his feet this time, and he scored. Issel averaging 16 and a half after last year, averaging a little over 21. Nice play by Theus, but you saw McGinnis get up there. It's going to be Chicago's ball, but again, Theus showing great agility in there. Did a good job of boxing down and deep, and we had heard in the halftime, uh, during the timeout, Larry Brown saying give help on defense, and that time McGinnis does so, and they stop Theus' effort. Look at that. Boy, I tell you, he stretched that arm up. It just kept going. It wouldn't go for him, though. 40-28. McGinnis down quickly. One thing about George, for a big man, he really gets down the floor in a hurry. Well, he has amazing foot speed and quickness, and that's what you don't real about, realize about him. He runs like a small forward. Tommy Bos Boswell does a good job of working down in deep right there, and you wonder sometimes why Boston let him go. May has his hands all over him, squeezes right down the lane between a bunch of folks, gets it off the glass. They're going to call that foul on Wilbur Holland. That's his first, second team foul now against Chicago. Boswell at the line. And there he is. He played a kind of a role in Boston. And he's an all-around player, and he's coming here, and they let him play an all-around style of game. His role was an oxygen break. He just came <laughs> in and gave people a blow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it was a role anyway. Here's Reggie Theus. Up to Wilbur Holland. Artis Gilmore back to Holland. Nice setup that time by Artis. That's one thing that makes him very tough with Holland in the game. He shoots the ball well from the outside, and when they can go inside and bring it back out, they flatten the defense out, and they get a good shot. 13-point lead now for Denver. 
Issel from the side. For a big guy, he can shoot with anybody. Well, you know what they say, advantage Issel, and when his advantage is having Gilmore on the perimeter and shooting the ball there. Gilmore almost messed that play up. Holland said, let's settle down a little bit now. And it goes to the big guy. Now, that's a funny okay. shot. He changed it halfway up. Well, I think he realized he was a little bit further out in his hooking range. He does not have that sky hook like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Consequently, he doesn't have that automatic confidence about it. He wheels around. He likes to face the basket a little bit more. Well, he had a loose ball foul on Scott May as Robert Smith, number five, will come in. So Wilkerson and Smith will be the backcourt tandem as we have McGinnis. And Boswell evidently shaken up. We have a 20-second injury timeout for him. Issel and McGinnis, the other two, now in the lineup for Denver. It's been a tough physical game, but when you have Gilmore inside, you can't stay out of that realm because everybody's boxing in on him, trying to reach in on him. He's so strong and overpowering. You have to give help, and that's where the physicality comes in to play. Gilmore is an overpowering type of player, and no one individual in this league can handle him. They need Chamberlain to come back, and he was thinking about going to Chicago. That's right. Lee Jones spots a reaching in foul that time. That's Gilmore, and Gilmore's second personal foul. Gilmore, though, will stay out of foul trouble. Normally, he does not foul out of many basketball games. His problem here is with Issel, who goes to the perimeter well, and he gives a little fake from the outside and goes by him. So he'll have to be cognizant of that. 3.46 to go before halftime. At halftime, Kevin Lockery, guy who's had a few technical fouls called on him this year. The New Jersey Nets colorful coach. And there is Bobby Wilkerson on a give and go. Nine points for Wilkerson. Well, Denver has really got good offensive execution going. They bogged down earlier, but they've got it back. Chicago is going to have to bounce back, and they're coming right back inside to Gilmore. Gilmore that time didn't want to get it off. Scott May, wait a minute, who's got it? Robert Smith. Well, I guess he didn't travel with it. And <laughs> the crowd here wasn't sure. Well, they, the Nuggets are doing an excellent job on defense by sending three men to Gilmore. Here comes Theus. 17-point lead for Denver. Chicago kind of out of their offense right now. Well, they seem to be passing up the open man. That time Scott May was open. He elected to give it to Holland. Look at that move by McGinnis, would you? To Wilkerson. I tell you, when McGinnis gets loose like that, you just got to get out of the area. Fast break opportunities, and when you get players with those kinds of capabilities running loose, you're going to have all kinds of problems. He went inside, made an excellent move, draw the defense to him, and it additions off into a wide open Bobby Wilkerson, and they get the basket. Again, McGinnis working hard, pulls the defense to him, and there's nobody by Bobby Wilkerson. You can't make those, you can't play. This is it. This is it, America. Chevrolet. America, if you're looking for a full-size car that goes easy on the gas. This is it. And easy on the road. This is it. A car with all kinds of room inside. This is it. The new Chevrolet, a new generation car bought and embraced by more than a million people in its first two years. Caprice and Impala for 1979. This is it. America, the new Chevrolet. Outward Bound. Rota, Spain. See your local recruiter or call toll-free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. Is Gillette Foamy thick and rich enough to halt this human cannonball? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to hold back this halfback? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to support this skydiver? <laughs> no. But if you want a clean, close shave, it's more than thick and rich enough. Next Saturday on the New Look CBS Sports Spectacular, take a look at this. The Pro Ice Spectacular with gold medalists Peggy Fleming and John Curry. Plus the fight of the week. From Hawaii, Men's World Team Surfing Championship. Plus live coverage of the start of the 24 hours of Daytona. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. 
Denver with a 19-point lead. Chicago trying to regroup forces. They bring John Brown into the forward. He has the ball now. Brown with a mismatch. Smith on him. But this into Gilmore. They go back to the guy that's carried him all the way, and that shot just won't go for him. Here they come on a run. Three, four on one. And Wilkerson to Issel, and nice play. Well, they nearly didn't get it because they couldn't get the ball in the middle. They had three guys on one side, and Holly could almost zone up on them, but they do get the basket as Wilkerson goes all the way in. You talk about Gilmore, they're giving two and three guys on him, but Chicago has no movement anyplace else. There's Holland open. That was a fine pass. Heads up by Theus. That's what you said earlier. He sees the floor so well. Theus sees the ball and the court. He gives it to the people that are open. Now Chicago must put the ball in from the perimeter to loosen it up inside so Gilmore can go back to work again. 51-32, a minute 51 till halftime. Issel in, and he's charged. He picks up the foul running into Wilbur Holland. At halftime, Rod Hundley will visit with New Jersey Nets coach Kevin Lockery. Well, you see right there, Gilmore giving away to Issel, who had gone by, so he doesn't get the foul. Holland doing the thing the coaches always talk about, giving help. Even the big guys need help. As the second foul on Issel, another turnover. Chicago played with, played, rather, with the turnovers. Here's Robert Smith. And Denver right now is off and moving. Well, they're, they're blowing them away right now, and it's because Chicago is struggling offensively. They've come in, and their set offense is broken down. They're not getting easy offensive opportunities, and the Denver Nuggets are applying good pressure in the middle, and they come up with another steal and an easy hoop. Tom Boswell, that is a tenth turnover in this game against Chicago. All of a sudden, when it looked like Chicago was going so well and going to get back in that basketball game, they broke down. They've only had a couple of hoops, and they've gone exclusively to Gilmore right here. Holland's the only guy that's been scoring, and he hits again from the side. At the one-quarter mark, it was a four-point game, and all of a sudden, it's 55-34. Again, it's on the move. The thing that's obvious to me, Steve, is that Denver's tempo is so much quicker. Chicago can't seem to pick up their tempo and compensate. Well, the Chicago only really has one style of play, and that's basically to come down and set up, and that hurts them very much. The Nuggets, on the other hand, can run the set offense, and they also can run off the break. Now, they've been fortunate to get the easy opportunities, and they've cast in on them. Chicago, when they made their changes in the substitution, they seem to have broken their rhythm, and they have not got back, they have gotten back to the offensive firepower that they had early in the basketball game. McGinnis has been dominant in this period, and Thompson has been sitting on the bench. So McGinnis converts both of them. That last foul on Landsberger, his first, and it's 57-34. McGinnis in this game has 10 points, 13 for Thompson, 8 for Issel, 11 Wilkerson. So good balanced scoring by the Denver Nuggets. Wilbur Holland trying to hit three in a row. Landsberger comes away with it. He has 13 rebounds in this game. And a little pushing and shoving, and who's this one on? It's Kim Hughes. He has four fouls. Uh, Kim Hughes is real active, and he's trying to get the ball. And he does an excellent job of blocking this shot right here. You see he gets him off the speed. Hughes goes up, gets the piece of the ball, then Gilmore comes in. He comes over Gilmore's back. Chicago has the ball out, but they need a lot more plays like that. Kim Hughes takes a break. McGinnis takes a break. And David Thompson is back in the basketball game. There's 30 seconds left in this period. And also Anthony Roberts checks in. As you said, 30 seconds left before halftime. Here's Landsberger forcing one in, and that's not a bad move. Uh, he's real nice around the basket. And he tries to get in that red area, and any time he can get down in there, he's got an excellent chance of getting the ball in. Chicago having to play some catch-up basketball. That's the worst kind of play. <laughs> Boy, it is, and particularly when the big guys being boxed in and Started inside like he is. Gilmore comes away, but Anthony Roberts with the steal. Three seconds left. Gilmore trying to keep it away, and he does. And so the first half comes to a close here at McNichols Arena as the Denver Nuggets, after moving off very quickly to an 11-4 lead, had a four-point lead after the first period, and now 57-36 at halftime. There's a whole new direction, a whole new point of view. Everybody's out and going, doing what they love to do. That's why now you'll find the age of 7-Up is here. Because we love that crisp, refreshing taste, so light and crystal clear. Moving up, running up, looking up, serving up. America is turning 7-Up, reaching up, getting up, feeling up, getting up. Gee, Mr. Goodrich.
Bench, I don't know. It's going kathump, kathump, kathump. Kathump, kathump, kathump. Yeah. Mr. Goodwrench understands your GM car. He has special GM training and GM equipment available to help him analyze your car and diagnose the problem. No more kathump. Thanks. Keep that great GM feeling. Mr. Goodwrench? With genuine GM parts. I understand. Attention, Track 2 users. Attention, Aptra users. Get ready for really clean shaving. Introducing Ultrax from Schick Super 2. The only twin blades with one push cleaning. Watch. One push pushes out soap and stubble for a clean start on really close shaves. Look. Ultrax slides on Track 2 razors. Clicks on Aptra razors. Get new Ultrax with one push cleaning. Only Schick Super 2 Ultrax has one push cleaning. Because of a certain ability I possess, I've been asked to tell you all the useful shopping information you can find in the Bell System Yellow Pages. Names, addresses, phone numbers, maps, directions, credit cards, items for sale, charge accounts, deferred payment plans, brand names, regular valet parking, custom work, machine work, quantity discounts, colors, days and hours of business, insurance, bonding, deliveries, endorsements, cash and carry, 24-hour service, estimates, illustrations, years in business, same day. When you need to know who, what, where, when, and why, let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. Thank you. Basketball is everyone's game. Short folks, tall folks, girl folks, boy folks, young folks, all folks. Basketball is everyone's game. Basketball, it's your game. The Denver Nuggets with a 57-36 lead. Well, Kevin Lockery of the New Jersey Nets has always been a very vocal guy. Rod Hundley visited with him. I'm Hot Rod Hundley, and last week on the beautiful campus of Princeton University at Princeton, New Jersey, I was able to corner one of the most controversial coaches in the NBA, Kevin Lockery of the New Jersey Nets. Oh, no, no, technical. Oh, Hot Rod. How much does it cost? Hey, no fine. No technicals. Oh, I've been down to Piscataway, New Jersey looking for you. They send me over to Meadowlands. I go over there. There's a big hole in the ground. They say go over to Princeton University. Here I am. Were you trying to hide from people? Well, we haven't been playing too well. And when we're not playing well, we move around, try to get a victory, change the pace. Come on, let's go ahead okay, and talk. Okay, come on in. <laughs> I want to talk to you about the referees. Okay. One of your favorite <laughs> subjects. All right. <laughs> Well, Kevin, it's been since uh, 1963, last time we played against each other. This is the first chance we've had to sit down and talk about basketball. The game has changed, in particular the referee, and you lead the league in technical fouls. <laughs> I've led the league the last couple of seasons in technical fouls. I think, Rod, when we played, uh, there was less players and less officials, and we came friendly with the, with the officials and not nearly as many technicals. It's, it's a changing game, and I think if we were more friendly together, the officials <laughs> and the coaching would be less technical. How about now you got three referees instead of two? That is, that's one more guy that's got a shot at you. Well, the chances are 33% better now that I get a technical in a, ba in a basketball <laughs> game. <laughs> All right, the referee has just hit you with a second technical foul. You know you're out of the building. Your wife's sitting up in the stands. How does she react to all this? Well, she reacts all right now, but the first time she sees me coach, she couldn't believe it because uh, off the floor and away from the game, I'm a little low-keyed compared to the way I work. And uh, she was extremely surprised when she saw me how <laughs> the way I work the basketball game, but uh, she's used to it by now. And it's, I bet, uh, in particular, when she sees a new dress you'd like to have, and there goes that <laughs> money out the window. Yeah, Who some... pays these fans? You pay them? Well, unfortunately, oh, for, for our club, they pay them. Hey, you have two sons, Kevin Jr. and Steven. They both play basketball. How do they react to their dad getting technical fouls? The one thing I tell them is make sure you never get a technical <laughs> because if they start getting technicals, think people think they're, uh, they're like the old man. So I try to tell them, make sure you stay off your fishes when, you, when you're playing. How about basketball uh, in New Jersey? It's got to be a little frustrating. You win the ABA. You win the, the uh, ABA championship. You had the good doctor, Julius right. Irving. You win 55 games. Then the next year, they merge. You come into the NBA. And your first year, you won 22 and lost 60. It's got to be a little frustrating. It really is, because uh, we've seen what the other teams in the ABA, particularly San Antonio and Denver, has done. And we were able to beat them for two, two out of three championships in the ABA. If we could have came over with our ball club intact, I really honestly believe now, from being in the league for years, that we had a chance to win it all in the NBA also. 
Well, you played 11 years in the NBA, Kevin, and scored over 10,000 career points and never played in an NBA All-Star game. Well, someone said that I scored 10,000 points, but the guys I were guarding scored 11,000. So I guess that's, <laughs> that's the reason I didn't make the All-Star The team. fans vote on it now. In those right. days when you played, it was the sports writers. You right. like that better? I'm all for the fans voting on it, even though there'll be some discrepancies. Some players, some teams will load up the ballot boxes, but I believe the fans pays the tariffs tariff for this league and uh, it's an entertainment business and anytime you got them sharing in a situation in the league I think it's good for basketball. Well Kevin you guys have uh, pretty much weathered the storm you started as the New York Nets in the ABA uh, changed to the New York Nets in the NBA and then moved to New Jersey still the Nets and playing in a lot of different places first the Coliseum and then you moved into uh, Piscataway New Jersey and now a chance to move into one of the most beautiful complexes in the world and that's going to be uh, at Meadowland. Well, I think we got a chance, Hot Rod, to assume we keep continuing on and become a successful basketball team on the floor, which we've improved. Uh, we're at the 500 level with a chance for the playoff now. Now, when we get into the new building in the Meadowlands, I think it has a chance to be not only one of the best franchises in basketball and most successful, but in all of sports. Hey, Kevin, is that a world championship NBA ring? It's not an NBA ring, Hot Rod. It's the last ABA championship ring. Uh, when we were in the ABA, we beat Denver, which is a fine ball club. Uh, we had Dr. J, uh, Rich Jones at, at the forward, Kim Hughes, Brian Taylor, and John Williamson at the guards. Several other great players. And I seen you last week on the halftime with Kevin Grevy on CBS Halftime. You're trying to get his ring. There's no way you got his. There's no way you're getting mine. The only way you ever get a ring, Hot Rod, is to make a comeback. Fat chance I got. <laughs> This is the first of eight consecutive games on this road trip, so uh, good luck to you. And try to be a good boy. No technicals, huh? I will, Hot Rod. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's halftime. The Denver Nuggets with an 11-point lead over the Chicago Bulls. The NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. He's at his fighting best. John Wayne stars as Big Jake on the CBS Tuesday Night Movies at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. This is CBS. At the conclusion of today's game and each of our NBA telecasts during the season, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game. In conjunction with this award, Chevrolet will present a check for $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the Players College or University. Any student may be eligible to benefit from these scholarship funds. And today's winner will be announced at the end of this telecast. Steve Jones, you and I will be voting for the MVP. And should we disagree, our producer, Bill Barnes, will cast the deciding vote. So in this first half of play, it's been the Denver Nuggets rolling very well. They've been paced in scoring by David Thompson's 13. Wilkerson has added 11. George McGinnis, 10. Issel with 8 points. The Andy Williams San Diego Open is underway again today. Yesterday, Fuzzy Zeller had a two-stroke lead. For an update, let's go to Ben Scully. Yesterday, we had to go off the air before showing you Bill Cratchit's 18th hole. He had hit his second shot into the gallery, had taken a drop, finally chipped onto the green in three, and so he had this putt for birdie. He was two under at the time. He got his birdie at 18 to go to three under par and join Billy Casper and Gil Morgan at three under, three shots back of the tournament leader, Fuzzy Zeller. Yesterday, the weather was magnificent. We probably sold a lot of real estate in Southern California. Today, they might be giving it back. We have a 30 mile an hour wind, a definite threat of rain, so Fuzzy Zeller's two stroke lead is very much up in the wind, chased by Jerry McGee at four under, then the trio, Casper Morgan and Cratchit at three, and Lee Trevino lurking in the weeds, four shot back at two under par. That's it as we await the final round of the Andy Williams San Diego Open. Now this is Vin Scully in La Jolla, back to NBA basketball. Welcome back to McNichols Arena, the home of the Denver Nuggets, who at halftime have an 11-point lead over the Chicago Bulls. As in this first half of play, very fine shooting by the Denver Nuggets. They are shooting almost 58% from the field. On the other hand, Chicago has not been hitting that well from the field. They're shooting just under 33%. The turnover department, 11 turnovers for Chicago in this first half of play, as opposed to eight for the Denver Nuggets. Rebounding-wise, surprisingly, too, 
is that Denver is out rebounding the Chicago Bulls at halftime, 28 to 23. So it's been a very fine first half for the Denver Nuggets, who have one, two, three men in double figures in this first half of play. They've been able to go to the bench and maintain that advantage. On the other hand, the Chicago Bulls have gotten an outstanding performance from Artis Gilmore with a total of 13 points. He's followed by Landsberger, who's played well. He has a total of nine points and 13 rebounds. All right, let's join Steve Jones. He's with David Thompson. Oh, I'm here with David Thompson and everybody's all-league all-star. David, Friday night you had an excellent basketball game. You see to be much more under control. Your offense is a little bit easier for you. Today you have 13 points. You seem to be going pretty good. What do you think the reasoning for that? Well, uh, I'm getting more into the flow of the game, and I, I'm taking the ball a little more myself, uh, going a little more individual, uh, taking the ball to the basket. And anytime my outside shot is on, it seems to help my overall game, and that's really been the key. I've been shooting the ball a lot better from outside. You think you finally adjusted to playing the outside position playing guard. I know that you're a lot more comfortable when you can catch the ball instead of having to bring it up the court. You think you finally adjusted to playing outside? Yeah, I'm getting used to it. I'm um, getting better more and more with more experience. Uh, basically, my game is 15 feet and on in, but now I'm working on my outside game, handling the ball a little more and just getting a better feel of the overall game. All right, Dave, we want to thank you. We'll be looking forward to seeing you at the All-Star game. Have a good second half. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, gentlemen. 57-36, that's our halftime score. The Denver Nuggets on top. We're gonna to be back with the start of the second half in just a moment. Think of yourself in a special way in the new Monte Carlo from Chevrolet. Think of yourself behind the wheel. Enjoy that special Monte Carlo feel. Standing tall, feeling proud Put a little distance between yourself and the crowd Chasing bad guys is not so glamorous outside of the movies. You find you spend a lot of time on stakeouts eating cold pizza, and you'd rather be someplace else having a cold beer. For me, that'd be one of these. White beer from Miller just in case I gotta move fast. See, Light's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling, and the taste is just great. Ain't that right, Muggsy? <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. A family is about to lose its home forever. Not the home on the left. All state homeowners insurance can pay to rebuild that house. The real disaster is on the right. The owner died before the mortgage was paid. Allstate Life has mortgage protection insurance to help give your family a debt-free home if you die. You need mortgage protection insurance, too. So your family won't lose its home. See your Allstate agent for both kinds of insurance. Make sure your home lives on. You're in good hands with Allstate. <coughs> Come along, R2. You can't have whooping cough. Droids don't get dangerous diseases like whooping cough or measles. But children do, and they can get very sick even die. Are to let me tell them? Parents of Earth, childhood diseases can be prevented. Call your doctor or local health department. Immunize your children, please. And may the force be with you. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Basketball Association. The NBA on CBS is sponsored by Hertz, the superstar in rent-a-car. The Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers coast to coast. Fourteen thousand one hundred and sixty-five on hand for this one. And Steve, we were talked about the stats a little bit earlier. Shooting-wise, Denver has really gotten the better of that. Well, the shots come from the 
types of shots. They're 58% because they're getting shots that the players can make. They're getting easy opportunity shots and coming without a lot of defensive pressure on them, and consequently they're shooting 58 in Chicago, only 33. And a 21-point lead now for the Denver Nuggets. Charlie Scott off to Issel. He is in there along with McGinnis, Bobby Wilkerson, and David Thompson. The same five that started this game. Scott, a tough shot. Mickey Johnson is back in there for Chicago. He didn't see a lot of playing time, and an easy two for Wilbur Holland. So Holland, Theus, Mickey Johnson, Mark Landsberger played very well in the first half, and Artis Gilmore opened the second half for Larry Costello. Bobby Wilkerson down the middle, and what a game he is having. He has 13 points. Well, Mickey Johnson is looking all the way over at the bench, wondering who was supposed to give him help. But that time he got screened. Wilkerson came down the lane, and there were three red shirts in there. Got to have a little bit better communication. There's Theus showing a move. Landsberger inside again, and he has a bundle of rebounds, but he can't get it to go. Bundle of rebounds and no points to show for it. Landsberger had 14 rebounds in that first half. Broken up. It'll be Denver's basketball. A fine offensive rebounder, Landsberger, but he's got to be able to finish it off. It's like being able to close the deal. So now Wilkerson wide open McGinnis. They rubbed off Landsberger, but they didn't get the basket. Issel to David Thompson. And that'll be off of Thompson, Chicago's basketball. Well, when you're down by 21 at half, what do you tell your team? Just kind of chip away at it? Well, you tell them we would like to be within a 10-point range, 10, 12-point range at the start of the fourth quarter. They always say, boys, we, we can't get it all back at once, so let's take one basket at a time, have good offensive execution, play a little bit better defense. Make them shoot the ball from the perimeter. Let us get the layup. Landsberger that time, boy, he shot that one up high, didn't he? Good rebound and a follow shot, and it's 59 to 40. The thing the Bulls have been able to do at the start of this quarter is get two and three tries at the hoop, and if you can do that, you've always got a chance. David Thompson pulling up with one. And it's saved by Bobby Wilkerson. McGinnis, George McGinnis, he loves that shot. McGinnis now with 12 points. The thing that the Chicago Bulls must concentrate on doing is making the Denver Nuggets now come down and set up every time and try and make them put that ball up from the outside with some defensive pressure on them. Mickey Johnson can't get it to go. Here comes David Thompson. In that first half, Johnson didn't even score. He picked up two quick fouls. Wilkerson from the corner. Thompson, they're getting to follow multiple shots, and they're getting the basket. And that's going to get Larry Costello off his feet. He's going to have a talk. He's going to say, fellas, you didn't understand a word I said at halftime. We'll have to do the same thing all over again. So they've fallen behind two more. They trailed by 21 at half. It's now 63 to 40, 940 second period. Sometimes it seems the whole world is burning, and you don't think it'll ever go out. But sooner or later, the fire does die, and it isn't the water and axes that do it. It's you and a handful of tired men. Now comes Miller time, time to finally head for the best-tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. When it's time to relax, Miller stands clear. If you've got the time, well, if you've got some time, we've got the beer. Miller beer. Introducing Hertz Takeoff Rates. Save up to 35% on the average weekday rental when you take off Thursday through Sunday for a minimum of two to three days. Take off in a subcompact for only $13.95 a day. Fairmont's $15.95. Granada $17.95. Thunderbirds $21.95 a day. All with no charge for mileage. There are some restrictions, so check with Hertz. Take off next weekend with Hertz Low Takeoff Rates. From the author of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid comes Mr. Horn. His story is more than just another Western. David Carradine and Richard Widmark star in Mr. Horn. 23-point lead for Denver. And I'll tell you, Larry Costello was upset during that timeout. And he said, you didn't listen to what I said at halftime. They come right back. They put the top on that one. He was telling them, 
basically in that timeout, fellas, it starts right here with us. We've got to each play our own man and play some individual defense. He went down the line because we're 7 2, 6 10, and 6 8. We're not getting any rebounds. That's true. They had a guy like David Thompson, 6 3, taking it right over the top, doing it all offensively and getting offensive rebounds, and that certainly hurts him. Boy, boy, can he get up in the air. Every time I see him, I just can't get over it. 65 42. David Thompson scoring his 17th point. Control is so important in the basketball game. You'll see Thompson here completely under control, goes up. Gilmore tries to come over. It's Mickey Johnson trying to come over, but he's there too late. Chicago oh. turning that ball over for the 12th time. Got a foul. Looks like it's Mickey Johnson. Look at Phoenix and Boston leading Golden State. The Warriors having some problems right now. Well, the Warriors are struggling. A lot of teams seem to be struggling today. It, Visiting teams are having a tough time coming away with any kind of thing. Harley Scott, they're moving the ball around. They're getting more and more cracks at it. You can't win basketball games like that, and Costello's beside himself. Here's Landsberger now with 17 rebounds in this game. Mickey Johnson playing with three fouls. That's a tough one. He got away with it, though. He got away with it. Mickey Johnson needs to get himself involved in the basketball game offensively, and then everything else for him seems to pick up. It should be the other way around, but in his case, he needs to see a few balls go down before he plays a pretty good defense. A little pushing inside there. Landsberger and McGinnis. And it's Landsberger who picks up the foul. Landsberger and McGinnis, both physical players, and that time Landsberger decided he was a member of the Chicago Bears and not the Bulls. Dan Landsberg is big enough, isn't he? 6'8", 225. He's got to weigh more than 225. He's got to be closer to 235. Thompson out to Scott. Long shot. And look at that. Three men on the boards that time. Well, they're now responding. They're making the ball come up from the perimeter. They tried to get the ball into Thompson. He had to give it up on the double team. They made the good offensive play, and Chicago cut him off with one shot. Eight minutes to go. Third period. 65-44, Denver. They have seven seconds on the shot clock. Gilmore, that left hand, won't go. Scott with Holland, shoulder to shoulder. Blocked by Gilmore, beautiful block that time by Gilmore. Back they come, three on two, Holland all the way. Landsberger again is there, but it won't go for him. That was 18th rebound for Landsberger. They missed some follow shots. The other end, George McGinnis, Wilkerson. They're going to reset it. McGinnis broke it up. Mickey Johnson reached in and got it away from him. Here comes Theus. Watch this. Now they finally get a hoop. They went a little rat race basketball back and forth with a few turnovers and no control. Chicago finally gets a little hoop there, a little encouragement from Larry Costello, but they had a good positive effort. Landsberger following on break. They didn't get it. They came back, played some good defense, and got a basket. It's one of the first times they've been able to run in this game and come away at the better for it. There's a charging situation. Bobby Wilderson. All you need is a good little defensive effort. Again, Mickey Johnson getting there. It didn't look like he was completely covering that baseline. Looked like Wilkerson had head and shoulders by, but they get the call. They need a few breaks. And again, 6.52 left in the game. They can still get within 10. 65-46, Holland off to Landsberger. Reggie Theus, Scott on in. Mickey Johnson with seven seconds on the shot clock. He didn't get anything on that one. Well, that's selfish basketball by Mickey Johnson. Charlie Scott, Gilmore, and reaching over is David Thompson, and he committed the foul. Boy, it's getting pretty physical right now. It's pretty physical out there, but you'll see Chas got cut in and tried to take it over. Mickey Johnson does not get it. Gilmore's down and deep in the smaller. David Thompson tries to come over his back. No chance, and Charlie Scott is going to have some words about that. From the top man right down to the bottom man, it just passes right down the line. Everybody pushes for quality. Willie Rawls, utility man. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. My job is to replace uh, any absentees. I'm here, there, all over the plant. Yeah, you know, you're not tied down to one job all the time. You're around different jobs. Metal finishing, welding, soldering. But soldering, I think I enjoy soldering more than any other job I've done because there's a lot of skill in that. Yeah, the fellas keep something going all the time. They, it's never dull around there. 
Yeah, well, they get along very good. Yeah, unions, unions good. Yeah, the people on the line, they have a lot of interest in the car. If I go out to buy a car, that's where I go, looking for a, a General Motors car. Because I'm right, at, right there in the plant and I see how they're built, you know, see the closet that goes into them. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. Do unleaded gas prices give me fits? No way, buddy, because I got me a diesel-equipped Chevy pickup. No spark plugs, no carburetor, no distributor. And great EPA mileage estimates, too. Plus, diesel fuel traditionally costs less than unleaded gasoline. The diesel power Chevy pickup. A lot of miles per gallon and a lot less cost per gallon. Chevy trucks, built to stay tough. Take him to the basket, Mark. Larry Costello seeing maybe the earmarks of a comeback here, exhorting his troops, saying he's seen much better effort in the last four or five minutes of this game. Positive effort. The guys are beginning to play a little bit better defensively, even though Mickey Johnson took a little selfish offensive try the last time down. They are getting better offensive opportunities, and that's what he's asking of his team. Just chip away. Plenty of time in the ball game. Denver's going to give us a chance to put the ball in the air. Scott May has checked into the lineup. Here comes Lansberger. He has 18 rebounds. 23 is his career high. Allen hits it. All that's, the way, that's the way they diagrammed it as we looked in just before they started. So Chicago's not dead in this one yet. 65-48. Again, it's off to Issel. Issel out to Thompson with Scott May coming out on him. Scott May picking up the foul. Scott getting up a little slowly, and I know everyone's concerned every time he goes down because of all the problems he's had with an E. Bounced around a little bit, but he didn't move his feet. He had his body there, but his feet were still tangled up. That's the reason he's rolling around on his back on the baseline. That's three fouls now on Scott May. 65-48. Again, it dribbles it off his foot. And the scramble is on, and they're after it. Thompson. Oh, what a play by David Thompson. Fast and furious activity. Well, we talk about control, and again, Chicago did not have the ball. Everybody tried to break and run away from it. Scott May scrambling all over. Thompson comes in, shows Gilmore his body, and then takes the ball away from him and puts it in. 67 to 48. The intensity picking up. Theus to Landsberger. Tough shot. He can't get it. Again, it's just barrels in there. Intercepted by Holland. Wilbur Holland all the way, and Wilbur Holland now has given him a shot in the arm offensively. He has 14 points. Well, Wilbur Holland knows where the basket is, and he's going to keep looking at it, which is important. They need someone to continue to score. They've cut into the lead a little bit, and again, they've got to play good defense, make the ball come up from out there, and try and get down and get some easy opportunity. Well, they've cut it to 17 after trailing by 21 and a half. Scott May cuts it by two more, and as I said before, the earmarks of the comeback are shaping up now for Chicago. Well, interesting how defense can bring you back in the game. Steve. Well, it's, it's not so much defense. I think it's your offense that kind of keeps a combination of the two. And if you get good baskets, your defense seems to pick up. There's Thompson. Tough shot, but he got it again. And David Thompson with 21 points. Control. I keep saying control, and he's playing under control. He's doing anything offensively he wants. They're going to have to give him some help. Inside, four and a half minutes to go. Third period. Theus to Scott May. Into Landsberger. Landsberger taking McGinnis in to Scott May, and he's hit two in a row. Scott May with that great shot. It's almost a picturesque shot. He's got a classic outside jump shot. He just is not in very good game shape. Again, not having the chance to put the ball in the air too many times. But again, Chicago's gotten better ball movement, and their defense has picked up because of it. Scott May with six points on Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson, difficult shot at best. Landsberger with yet another rebound. That's 19 for him. Up to Holland. Over Holland pulls it up. Well, Denver thought they were going to get away with this one easily. I think they know now they're in a basketball game. Well, this Chicago is, is playing tough. This is the same thing that happened the last time they played. Scott May all of a sudden got himself a couple of hoops, and he's got his nose on the basket. He comes with three baskets in a row and a, and a chance to get a three-point play. And Larry Brown, as we see him again working in deep, is going to have to call a timeout to have some type of discussion about their defensive effort. So Scott May now with eight points. Picking up the foul, Wilkerson, his second, will be back. This game's really getting tough. You're feeling good, feeling good about yourself. The way you should, the way you 
You're feeling good about yourself, and it shows. You're drinking one-calorie Diet Pepsi-Cola, the taste that's changing the taste of America. And you're drinking Diet Pepsi. Yeah, you're drinking Diet Pepsi. And it shows. In business, the more efficiently you use your time, the more money you make. Time is money. So if you're spending hours dictating letters to far-off places, and hours are spent typing them... I've got other work to do. Kick the letter habit. Pick up your phone and give them a ring. The phone turns your time into money. Uh-oh. That TV show we want to watch goes on in five minutes. America, stop rushing your life away just to catch a TV show. Get a Sony Betamax video recorder and automatically videotape that show while you're doing something else and watch it anytime you want. Sony Betamax, it could change your whole way of life. See U.S. Open champion Jimmy Connors, Wimbledon winner Bjorn Borg, Grand Prix Masters champion John McEnroe, and Australian titleist Guillermo Vilas when CBS Sports presents exclusive coverage of the Grand Slam of Tennis, February 10th and 11th. From first serve to match point, you'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. One of the best X's and O's man in the business, Larry Costello, he diagrams a play for his team and tries to get them set defensively. They have been doing a lot of talking, been very animated in that huddle over there, trying to get back in this basketball game. They've been very positive, and the key for them is movement, good effort. Scott May now trying to complete a three-point play, and as you see, he's made it 69-57, three and a half minutes to go, third period. Chicago's come back into this game, battling from a 21-point deficit at halftime. Robert Smith out to Anthony Roberts. They're moving the ball now. You can see the ball movement that they were lacking earlier. Here's Roberts. Gilmore with Boswell, and he rejects it, and it is tough in there. Boswell reaching over Scott May. Oh, boy. Well, I tell you, you know, Boswell does an excellent job to get that rebound, and then he forgot about the big skyscraper sitting in there. You'll see he goes up, gets the rebound. Gilmore gets himself right. He gets the ball again. Boswell's upset because he can't handle it and comes over Scott May's back. Chicago's working, trying to get to that 10-point deficit. First foul on Boswell. We approach the three-minute mark now of this third period. 69-57, Wilbur Holland. That time, Boswell reached in and broke it up. Here comes Smith. Smith broken up by Theus. Theus with the long arms, and we got him right on top of us now. It's going to be Chicago's basketball. I didn't know you were that quick, big guy. They started to come over us, and you bailed out. I tell you what, you, that's perseverance. And there is a quick basket and a chance for a three-point play as Landsberger got down behind him while they were arguing on the play. Cruz control, the Denver Nuggets and Larry Brown looks on saying, fellas, we got to wake up and play basketball out here. They're starting to come back. He's upset at the call on the officials, but the team has gone to sleep. They've allowed Chicago to get within 10 with 2.52 left. We got us a ball game, Gary. Yes, we do. And Landsberger, who has just played remarkable basketball, has 15 points and 19 rebounds. And he's got another one. Landsberger off to Theus. And he, I thought that was a pretty wise play. He just brought it out. Let's go for one now. Let's get inside 10 points with this team. Under control. And if they continue to go like this, they're going to start to come back down inside to Gilmore because they're getting the ball up from the perimeter and they're getting it down. Anthony Roberts comes away with the rebound. Ten-point difference in this game at the 231 mark. Third period. Issel brings it out to Smith. Tom Boswell. Roberts. Boswell going to shoot outside. Tipped in beautifully by Anthony Roberts. Roberts with his first points of the game. Well, that's what he does so well for them. He's a good offensive rebounder as well as a perimeter shooter. They need that kind of effort. They went dead in the water. Chicago has been coming back and chipping away. And there's a way of chipping away at it. Artis Gilmore. Gilmore now with 15 points. He had 10 of those, though, in the first half. They have gone away from him, but everyone else has gotten involved offensively. That's what they need to open it up for him again. It's down to 10 points again. Anthony Roberts giving him a shot in the arm offensively. 
back at you. That's what they call that in your face. And he scores another hoop. Again, giving them some kind of lift. Denver's beginning to pick up their defensive effort. A lot of pushing and shoving in there as both of them jockey in for position. Those two being May and Roberts. They're really going after each other. Roberts on Scott May. May turns around. Lance Berger's there. It's 20 rebounds for him. Gilmore's got it. They're just forcing the ball. The basket, I believe, will count. And a chance for a three-point play coming up. That is just sheer strength inside. Well, when you got strong guys like that, you see Landsberger very active. No one boxes him. Gilmore gets it. Arms all over him. He just rolls it up. Again, Ola Chamberlain taking bodies off the ground with him. He gets two. They're down by 10. 122 left. And Thompson is back in the game. But more important, Larry Costello was right in front of us telling fellas, we're doing all we can do. Let's just keep it going. At the line now goes Gilmore. Landsberger has 21 rebounds, two away from his career high. That's the official count on Mark Landsberger in the rebounding department. And there's your score, the closest they've been in a long time, by nine. 73-64, Smith out to Issel. Issel bringing Gilmore out. Look at Gilmore get back in for that rebound. Well, that rebound right there was Otters Gilmore's 10,000th of his career. That's right, he needed six coming in here today. He's got over 14,000 points in his career and now 10,000 rebounds. What a productive career he's had. Mengelt threw it away, intended for John Brown. John Brown and Mengelt checking into the lineup right now. And we're gonna have a timeout by Denver. Denver asked for timeout with 54 seconds left in this third period. As the Chicago Bulls, after trailing by 21 at halftime, have climbed within nine points in this game, 73-64. They've done it with just pickup and intensity. They've got quite a performance from Landsberger, Gilmore, and I thought maybe one of the real outstanding performances was a guy by the name of Theus who came in and seemed to have control and had some ball movement. They've all played much better since they got blessed out in that timeout. Now we're going to take a look at Larry Brown's huddle and see if he can get his team offensively going and defensively riding. Baz and David. Dan's coming up. Baz, you pop. Don't pop until Dan receives it. The old post play. All right? Hey, don't pop until he receives it. This, look, the second time down, we're just hitting Dan and he's going straight on a drive on Gilmore. All right? We're running them both times. That's it. David, with you low. Woozy, that means you got to be aware of court balance. All right? We can't foul and can't give up second shots. And be aware of the clock, Robert. All right? We want to get it inside. Guys, <laughs> don't pop until Dan receives it. All right? Hey. One All right, shot Steve, now, what does he mean by not popping? Coming out to meet the ball, right? Don't come out. Don't break the play until we get everyone set in position. They want to get it down and deep. They're going to try to go to Gilmore. They're going to try and pull him out. You see Larry Costello. He's working down at the other end. Again, diagramming both coaches. Excellent coaches. And the thing that Larry Costello is trying to do is keep a positive effort for a team that's trying to come over the hill, Larry. Larry Brown is trying to keep him down. He's trying to emphasize the good things. Both coaches trying to keep their teams on a positive note. Well, we have a good one here, but a week from today, we're going to have a good one, too. The NBA All-Star Game from the Silver Dome and Pontiac. Be sure and join us. 1.45 Eastern Time. A nine-point game. Chicago setting up defensively with Mengelt and Theus at the guard spot. Boswell brings it out to Robert Smith. Now they've got 40 seconds left now for the end of this third period. Thompson, he shot it with a man in his face, and he got it. What a shot by Thompson, 23 points, he's fouled by Theus. Well, that's just a great offensive play by Thompson. You'll see Theus right there in his face. The problem for Theus is he brought that hand down and got called for the play. Thompson has a chance for a three-point play. Doesn't get it, and Gilmore rebounds. I tell you, Thompson in this third period has made three very pressure-packed free throws, or I should say field goals. People hanging all over him. All his field goals have been tough tries. Chicago the last two times down just when they seem to have got it going, have turned the ball over without a shot at the hoop, and that hurt. Now, Kim Hughes is coming in for Dan Issel with 25 seconds left in this period. Hughes will check in with a total of four fouls. Smith, Thompson with Anthony Roberts, Kim Hughes, and Tom Boswell. They're going to go for the last shot now this period. 75-64. Watching the clock very closely thing that you want to do defensively is not let the team run their play so you try to be disruptive run at the guy make them do something they don't want to do put the ball up quicker with three seconds 
defense. No good. John Brown's got it, so they do not get the two points on the last play of this third period. But what a third period we had. 12 minutes of very intense basketball. So the Denver Nuggets, who had a 21-point lead at halftime, now having a battle for their lives. They lead it 75-64. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Hello, Consley. Hi, Dad. I heard a rumor you finally passed the bar exam. Yeah. Congratulations. Frank, Frank will have the prime ribs and a couple of low and brown. Prime ribs? Low and brown? What are you doing? Buying dinner for the guy who put me through Boston. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Just the good friends. The NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. From the author of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid comes Mr. Horn. His story is more than just another Western. David Carradine and Richard Widmark star in Mr. Horn. This is CBS. Artis Gilmore today going over 10,000 rebounds in his career. Joining select group of people, Chamberlain's, Bellamy's, Silas's, Russell's, move over and make room for Big A. We start the fourth period. Be sure now and stay tuned for the MVP award at the conclusion of this game. We may have a tough time picking them. We have some people out there, the candidates. Mengel, rebound, Brown can't handle it. John Brown, good second effort to Gilmore, and Kim Hughes has just picked up his fifth foul. Kim Hughes has had a tough time all day long, and the problem that time is they play pretty good defense. Again, Chicago getting a good offensive effort on the boards. Mark Landsberger comes back in. You'll see Brown go down and deep. Kim Hughes all over the back. No complaint. Landsberger back in the game. They have a problem. They've got Scott May coming out because Denver has two big, strong guys in him, Boswell and McGinnis. They want to match up. And what a game Landsberger's having. He has 15 points and 21 rebounds. Gilmore looking back door, having trouble, he walked with the ball. Now well, Chicago, what is that, three times straight, I think, down the floor, they haven't, they've turned it over. They got within nine, and now they've had three turnovers, and that's hurt them. They've had a good defensive effort, good offense to the outscore the Nuggets in the third period, but they've got to come back to that effort that they finished with. Oswell backing in on Landsberger, Robert Smith seeing a lot of action, driving on Mengelt. And who got the foul? It's Mengelt. He did not have position. And now Charlie Scott will be checking in. Robert Smith makes an excellent move right here. Mengelt never having his feet set, not having his body over there. Robert Smith should have tried to get that ball in here. Maybe would have gotten a chance to shoot some free throws. And Smith comes out of the lineup for Scott. Thompson inside, 25 points. Any way you want it, he can get it done. And he has hit some shots in this second half. 77-64. Chicago is in nine, and all of a sudden now, Denver started to creep away again. Gilmore is going to bring it back by two, though. He got a lot of help that time. He wanted to put it over the top and stuff it. McGinnis came over, had a lot of hands in the way, so he had to take it off the glass. A tough try, but they got it. Gilmore with 20 points for the afternoon. Scott to David Thompson. Thea staying on him. This could probably match up as well as anybody on David, but David hits it again, and he's taking well, him on. The problem, again, is now Thompson is going inside and out, and Diaz really doesn't know what he's going to do. Thompson is too great an offensive player, so you've got to give him some help. You've got to make him work harder, and you've got to really concede him 25 a game if you want to start the ball game. John Brown walks with the ball. 
And he doesn't like that development. That's the 16th turnover against Chicago. Look at that one. It got a little tighter, didn't it? Well, Golden State's coming off the floor, and they're also back in the basketball game. 24 seconds to shoot. Anything can happen in this NBA, so you got to stay with us. 79-66. This will off to McGinnis. McGinnis on Landsberger. And another foul coming up. Who's it on? McGinnis really upset. It's going to be Landsberger committing the foul. Well, McGinnis really upset about something. Well, I think McGinnis wants a hoop, but he's coming right here. Now, he's got the ball up. He's saying he's in the way, and Gilmore comes up and knocks the ball down. Landsberger committing the foul. That is his third. Again, is still arguing, and Charlie Scott yelling some encouragement. Charlie Dudley. I think he wanted goaltending on the play, but what do you think? Well, it wasn't goaltending right there. Gilmore catches the ball. It wasn't on a downward flight. But George has been known to lobby for every point that he can get. Here's a guy that's on the line that's averaging 11 free throw attempts this year more than anybody else in the NBA. He just not been able to get a good percentage of the men. He's made like 376 of them, been there about 580 times. He's hit 67 percent. He leads in attempts and made free throws in the NBA. And that's because he's so quick and big and gets inside and you get in trouble when he does that. He also has the green light. <laughs> Here's Dudley. Mingelt, 81-66. Denver in this fourth period has put it together again. Gilmore at the Mingelt with six seconds on the shot clock. Gilmore trying to follow McGinnis has it. McGinnis had time to spot him off. Well, they brought Charles Dudley in to see if he could do something defensively. With, with David Thompson, excuse me, Gary, but they seem to have missed something with Wilma Holland out of the lineup. Here's Brown driving, and he's intimidated, and it is really tough inside. Here comes Boswell up to Thompson. McGinnis, Gilmore, and Gilmore's fouling. You talk about a meeting up above the basket. Well, they, <laughs> they said a little prayer up there. You see Thompson draws, and Gilmore turns his back, making McGinnis think he's got the easy stuff. That looks like a pretty good play. If Gilmore doesn't get that arm there and the bodies collide, that's a good block. Three fouls on Artis Gilmore and McGinnis to the line. Now you see his shooting percentage from the stripe. Not what he'd like to have. He's not shot well, but he's always been there, and that's important. I think if you get there enough times, eventually your concentration and your effort picks up. The Denver Nuggets doing a fine job defensively making Chicago Bulls turn the ball over, come back, and they have extended their lead. Chicago must now settle down and get some hoops. They should try, really, to get back running, getting some quick opportunities, and scoring a little bit easier. I thought your point was well made that when they took the guard outside, Holland out of the lineup, they may have lost a little something. You know, Holland is a guy that can give them that firepower, give them that quickness to get down court, and they haven't had that. There's Brown hitting from the corner, 83-68. That's only the fourth point in this third, or I should say, fourth period for Chicago. They had 64 points after three periods. And, and up and down quarter, as far as team shooting, Denver had the better in the first half, and then only were six for 20 at one point during the third. Scott dribbled that one off his foot. Chicago will have it, and that is the 13th turnover against Denver. And Gelt, Dudley, Gilmore, Brown, and Landsberger. That's the five in there now for Larry Costello's team. McGinnis on the steal attempt. Brown, double dribble. He was John in too Bra big a hurry. John Brown is pained. He knew he had a free chance to put the ball up. McGinnis had gambled and it was half court, and he just couldn't control it. And again, another turnover, and that's plaguing Chicago as they try to make their comeback bid. You know, McGinnis is 10th in the NBA in steals. He almost had one there. There's Landsberger. That's 22 rebounds for him, unless we've lost count somewhere. He's had so many of them, we have to keep checking the stats. He's done an excellent job of going to the board. He's really kept him in the game. Mingelt gets the ball up from the outside. They've got to have good defensive pressure, not turn the ball over. They're going to make it all the way back. 13-point game after cutting it to nine, and now Denver still not out of this one. With eight minutes to go. Scott into Boswell. Route on him. Boswell, and we've got charging on Boswell. He had no place to go. He had no place to go. He can't believe it. <laughs> you got that pain look on your face. You see right here, John Brown making up for the mistake at the other end, does an excellent job, put a little hand in there to get an advantage, and then he gets his body in front of him. That against Boswell, his second personal. Then Gelt off the Landsberger. 
John Brown. They're pushing him outside a little bit on defense now. They pushed him much oh. higher out, but they get the ball down and deep, and again, they close. Again, this happened in the last time they played. They begin to come back. The Nuggets working pretty hard. Defensively have them outside. Mengelt makes an excellent penetrating move. You see Landsberger rolls inside. Nothing but honey. Port of Call, Caribbean. The Navy. See your local recruiter or call toll-free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. Sorry, kid. Uh, gotta take you out of cleanup. Over six million shavers have said goodbye to their old razors and said hello to Atra, Gillette's best shave. The revolutionary Atra pivoting head gives a face-hugging action that outshaves every razor we've ever made. Close. Very close. Atra, Gillette's best shave. Atra, you're in a league by yourself. Zenith presents a breakthrough. A breakthrough. System 3. System 3. The best Zenith ever. The best ever. An advanced picture tube for the sharpest Zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. A totally modular chassis. All modular. Designed to be the best performing, the most reliable color TV in Zenith history. The most reliable. Zenith System 3. Zenith System 3. It's the best Zenith ever. A month ago today, it was a Chicago victory here at McNichols Arena against Denver, but boy, Steve, they've had to expend a lot of effort to play catch up all afternoon long. Also a month ago today, Denver had the same type of lead, and they ended up losing it. So Larry Brown is cognizant of that, and he's telling his team to keep good offensive pressure on the Bulls. David Thompson with Dudley on him, and this time he can't get it. Brown lost it. Oh, another crack at it for Denver. Andy oh. Williams open. Immediately following the conclusion of this game. So stay with us for that. Coaches try when they see that. You get the ball up from the outside. You have the board covered as McGinnis just barrels over John Brown. Lansberger comes away with it off to Dudley. Scott is back. Mengelt. Oh, what a shot that was. <laughs> he had two people all over him, man. Who touched it last? I think Denver dead. Let's see. Well, they should have gotten a foul out of that. He came up and showed the ball and brought it back, and he pushed it up in the air. It went all the way over the top. They say David Thompson nixed it. You see Mingel working in there, a little show and tell. Puts it up way high off the glass. Goes all the way over the back. Dudley's ready to catch it. Well, Wilbur Holland checks back in. Dudley will check out for the Bulls at the 7-13 mark. Landsberger to Mingel, shooting against Scott. Rebound McGinnis. McGinnis who can handle the ball. Off to Bobby Wilkerson. McGinnis picked up by Landsberger. Smith with Wilbur Holland on him inside. Seven minutes to go in the game. Oh, I don't believe McGinnis thought that was going to go in. Well, you got to get a luck in this game. Now when he put it high up in the air and it came off the glass, they get the basket. They got a 13-point lead. 18 points for McGinnis. Mengelt, well, as McGinnis has been very consistent this year, he's been over 30 points seven times. Mengelt, another outside shot, he nails it. Scott May getting ready to come in for Chicago, it's 85-74. Wilkerson out to Scott. Denver with good ball movement, Mengelt comes away with it, but I believe he picked up the foul. He thought he had a clean steal. It looked like a clean steal. McGinnis just apparently had lost control. He had made a quick move inside. There were two people in there on him, and Chicago came up with the ball. <laughs> Larry Costello right in front of him saying, Lee, I don't believe that. Come on, you kidding. After one quarter, Kansas City, Kansas with 621, Pengelt has picked up his second personal foul. Four team fouls now against Chicago, only one against Denver. Looks like McGinnis a little shaken up on that play. Takes him over. Taking a bit of a breather. So that Mengel is a tough guy, and he was a football player at Auburn. <laughs> he won't back off from anybody. 
He plays a little bit of football out there, but you need a guy that will go on the floor and come up with the loose balls for you and give you a good, honest effort out there to make a successful basketball team. Again, is putting on a couple of moves, dishes it off to Smith, and he misses an easy one. Here comes Wilbur Holland. They've got a chance now to climb the closest they've been in a long time. 85-74 our score. They got within nine earlier, and they're trying again to do that very thing. Gilmore, and it's a big turnover. Smith. He had enough spin on that ball that he got in. Just enough. He was low on the ground, and he just got it up as Mingelt was chasing to hit the lip and fell in for them. Chicago really a little frustrated as they try to run their offense. 18 turnovers, and that was a big turnover. Gilmore to Scott May, and then Gelt Smith hits the deck. Smith picks up the foul. Talking about a little football. <laughs> Say Robert Smith, he's not a very big guy. He's 5'11. They say he weighs 165. Mengeld, he's solid. He comes in here at six foot two, and they list him at 195. If Robert Smith continues to run into picks like that, he'll be 5'5 before his career is over. Landsberger with McGinnisani. Scott May. Boy, it's a tough shot. Landsberger trying to bottle. There he is again with another rebound. I believe that ties his personal high of 23. That's just a great rebounding effort. He's got a lot of offensive boards to keep the ball alive, and Holland gets it down for them. Holland has been tough. He has 16 points. He's been shooting and shooting well from outside. That was his 23rd rebound for Landsberger, tying his career high. And now we've got another foul. George McGinnis, and that's his third. 87-76, and again, they've got a chance to get within nine. they got a chance to get within nine with 4.56 left, almost five minutes left in the game. Plenty of time. What they must have is good offensive execution. They've been hitting the board good. they just got to cut down on the turnovers. Scott May into Gilmore. 4.46 left in the game. Gilmore looking around, backing in on Issel, and he forced it, but he couldn't get it. The Smith. Just can't get inside that 10-point mark here. And there's McGinnis. He is tied up. But a foul will go on Wilbur Holland. Larry Costello not too happy about that development. McGinnis look, goes to the line. It looked like they had McGinnis tied up right there. You see, man, he said, this will make coaches old in a hurry. <laughs> I think he was out of the league two years. He's back in, and I'm sure it brings back a few memories of those years he had with Milwaukee. He may want that vacation back if they keep going like this. George kind of bouncing those free throws around. There's Landsberger. He has 24 rebounds. That's a personal high for him. Career high. <laughs> Penalty in, and so it's three to make two, and McGinnis is going to need all of them. And he gets the third one. McGinnis now with 19 points. 88-76, low pressure by Smith on Holland. Holland's a tough guy to pressure. He's got good quickness, and that makes it difficult. He handles the ball well, and more importantly, he's dangerous because he's always looking to score. Theus with a left hand, can't get it. Holland tries to break it up, and this will save the ball. We're approaching four minutes in this game. Again, it's out to Issel. Broken up by Theus. But Thompson comes back with it. Theus trying to get back on Thompson. Again, it's, it's a long ways out. Smith comes away with it, of all people. He fakes Gilmore up, and Gilmore's committed the foul on Issel. That's four on Gilmore. That's about the only thing you can do in a situation like that. Hope he goes up with a fake. Well, anytime you've got that kind of offensive pressure on you where the little guy comes in, he almost has it clean, and he's got a man on the other side, Gilmore, trying to anticipate. Got a piece of the ball, but also got a piece of Dan Issel's head, and Issel's going to get some free throws because of it. Chicago's really struggling at the defensive end, and that's hurt them. Larry Costello, he's trying to pull one out of here somehow, and it has been an uphill battle. Trying to dream of some miracle to get him to run that play that will get them going offensively. They're again, they're going to take another timeout. They're going to have another discussion. They're going to see if they can make it right with 3.51 left in the fourth period. Most shampoo makers act like everyone with dandruff has the same type of hair, but not Selson Blue. 
Selsun Blue is the only leading dandruff shampoo with formulas for dry, normal, and oily hair, and the only one with the anti-dandruff ingredient doctors prescribe most. So no matter what kind of hair you have, get the really effective dandruff control you need from Selsun Blue, the dandruff fighter, now in dry, normal, and oily formulas. Chevy Chevette, best-selling hatchback in America. What do you have on it? AM radio, console, reclining bucket seats, white striped tires. It's all standard on the four-door Chevy Chevette, even the hatchback. Love it, but I don't need the hatchback. How come? I've already got a trunk. <laughs> Chevy Chevette, a lot of car for the money. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Hey, where's Bob? I thought he was with you. No, you're I'm kidding. He's not down yet. Hey, but do you think something happened? Let's start looking. Hey! How about a lowing brown? Bob! <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Hey, you know, for a minute there, you really had us worried. I know. And thanks. Low and brown. Well, the Chicago Bulls have twice climbed within 11 points, 9 points, the closest they've been. That's been the magic mark here in the second half of play. Denver's been able to meet every challenge when they've gotten within 9, and they've played good defense, good offense. They've gotten the ball when they've needed it. Consequently, they have the lead and the pressure, obviously, on Chicago to make another turnover, but Denver returns a favor. Guess who caught that pass? Larry Costello. He wanted the ball anyway to get it. That's 14 turnovers against Denver. Well, they'll try it again. Three and a half minutes left. Andy Williams, San Diego, open to follow immediately after this game. Here's Landsberger with McGinnis on him. Scott May into Gilmore. Gilmore, turn around. That's a tough shot for him. Landsberger there again, 25 rebounds. He's going to try it again, and he got it. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to give him my vote for the MVP. Oh, you've just gone out on the <laughs> limb, right? <laughs> He's got a contest with David Thompson, who's also answered big hoops for them, but Landsberger has been after it all day long. He works on his rebounding, so I guess he'll get his point total up. He has 19 points, 26 rebounds. Pretty fair piece of work. Here's Thompson shooting against Theus. Tipped out, here comes Theus. Theus, look at him move. Blocked by Thompson. Oh, what a play by David Thompson. Maybe I'm premature in that boat. Bobby Wilkerson. Bobby Walterson, who had 11 points in the first half, has 15 for the game. Well, the people, they like him here a lot. David Thompson coming back with another great block. He did the same thing against Lou Hudson coming over the top. On Friday night, he does it against Diaz, who had gone by Robert Smith and thought he was in clean. All right, Tom Boswell, Bo Ellis, number 31, will come in. Look you at see that Thompson one. coming right there, right over the back of Theus, way up in the air. Doesn't look like those legs are dead yet. We have a timeout now by Chicago with 2.20 left in this game. Larry Costello hoping somehow to pull this one out. But they obviously have their work cut out for them. Avis Super Saver rates. Special rates that save you money. Like our seven-day See America rate. Look out, L.A. Bye. Or our special holiday rates. We get to go to grandmother's house. Yeah! And on weekends, Avis Super Saver rates can save you up to 50% off our weekday rates. 50% off? Up to 50%. See you Monday. <laughs> Call our toll-free number or your travel consultant. Some restrictions do apply. All the stars will come out for CBS Sports exclusive live coverage of the NBA All-Star Game from Detroit. With the best in the East taking on the best in the West, you'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Scott May, you come out hard. Get this so we have two minutes, goal. 20 seconds Boom. left, yeah. and Larry Costello and trying to pull some magic off here. This Chicago team who's won the first two games here in McNichols Arena on the 28th of December. Then they went to the stadium in Chicago and duplicated their effort on the 29th. Well, they had two good efforts in a back-to-back -back series, and they seem to have lost it. They played a good first period, got bogged down in the second period, and it's been a long climb for them. They got within nine in the third period. They have been within nine. A couple of, 11 or nine was 
in the fourth period, but they have not been able to get over the hill as Gilmore works. Gilmore misses one that he didn't want to miss, 92-78. Approaching the two-minute period now as Issel to Smith. Bobby Wilkerson, Denver won't be in as much of a hurry now. Bo Ellis seeing action. Ellis has been out for the year with the knee operation. Here's Smith again, and he hits it. Robert Smith. <laughs> this guy, he was cut once last year. Then he was brought back, and he has a niche on this basketball team. 94, 78, a minute 51 left. Theus from the corner. Landsberger, Paolo tips, and he has 21 points. 21 points, 27 rebounds. 94 to 80. Issel off to Boswell. You can see they're in no hurry right now. They want to use some of that time. Well, they use that clock to have everything in their favor as Robert Smith makes a tough try. Landsberger with another rebound. And Theus, really a good athletic effort. He gets the hoop. You know, he can use either hand equally well. You notice that? He was his comfortable going up left-handed that time is right-handed either way they just have to be a little bit more consistent 94 82 off to Boswell 114 left in this one Denver trying to win their second in a row after breaking a three-game losing streak Friday night Bo Ellis Issel nice play by Bo Ellis Issel with 12 points 96 82 Holland to Theus one minute left Gilmore. Gilmore hasn't scored an awful lot in the second half. Theus. Well, Denver has done a good job of doubling up on him, making them take the shot from the position that he doesn't want. Early in the ball game, he was able to go in a one-on-one -on -one situation, wheel and roll inside and get any kind of hoop. And they, they started sending a bunch of people at him, and that changed Chicago's offensive yeah. effort completely. He's had only seven points in the second half. He has 20 for the game. Scott May driving inside, and he's been fouled. And they got a goaltend as Bobby Wilkerson went up and slapped that ball away. You'll see May out here now. He makes a good move to get by Bo Ellis. This is not smart basketball by Wilkerson as he slaps it away. Doesn't look like that ball was even going to be close to going in. And maybe Bobby Wilkerson has given his teammate a break. So the basket will go to Scott May. Scott Lloyd now comes in replacing artist Gilmore. John Brown will come into the ball game. Mark Lansberger will go out. Landsberger with 28 rebounds, 21 points. I give him my vote. Where are you on this? One? Well, I thought David Thompson he challenged him at every time, and I think that, you know, we kind of split on that. We might have to call for Billy Barnes to bail us out on that. All right, Bill Barnes, you will cast the deciding vote. Put the old pressure on. 25 seconds left. Smith. Scott Lloyd trying to get the ball, and Robert Smith instead comes away with it. Denver to win their 28th game of the year. Here you put one away. Six points for you. So Mark Landsberger is our MVP. Bill Barnes casts the deciding vote. Doubling up on me like the Chicago Bulls are being doubled up like Scott May out there. John Brown working hard. He gets it down, but it's a little bit too late. It's all academic now. 98 to 67, and there's our most valuable player. The Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award goes to Mark Landsberger, 21 points, 28 rebounds. The Chevrolet $1,000 scholarship will be awarded to Arizona State on behalf of Mark Landsberger. So 98 to 87, our store, the Denver Nuggets, after dropping the first two games of the year to the Chicago Bulls, come back to capture game three. The Miller people promised me a case of light beer if I could keep this ball spinning for the length of this commercial. Now, I'm not one to show off, but I do just about anything for a few light beers. You see, light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling, so I can stay loose. But the thing I like best is the taste. And I believe at this time that somebody here owes me a case of that taste. Thanks a lot, boys. See you around. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hi, Charlie. This is it. This is it. America's a new Chevrolet. America, if you're looking for a full-size car that goes easy on the gas. This is it. And easy on the road. This is it. A car with all kinds of room inside. This is it. The new Chevrolet, a new generation car bought and embraced by more than a million people in its first two years. Caprice and Impala for 1979. This is it. America's a new Chevrolet. 
Owens Corning would like to help you understand insulation R values. R stands for resistance to heat flow. It's the right way to measure insulating power, not thickness. Look, it takes about 18 feet of stone to give you an R value of R19, but only 15 inches of wood and six inches of this Owens Corning fiberglass insulation. So check for R value. The higher the R value, the greater the insulating power. Want to know about insulation? Ask the experts. Ask Owens Corning. It's all over at McNichols Arena. The Denver Nuggets defeating the Chicago Bulls 98 to 87. An update on Mark Landsberger officially now. He's been credited with 29 rebounds to go with his 21 points. And of course, he's our MVP. But as you look at this Denver attack, they got very good balance scoring. David Thompson led the way with 27 points, but he was closely followed by George McGinnis with 19. It was 15 points for Bobby Wilkerson, 12 for Dan Issel. And then they had some good scoring off the bench from Hughes with six, Roberts with four, and Robert Smith with a total of eight. As far as Chicago is concerned, leading the way was Landsberger. He was followed by Gilmore, who had 20 points. Then Wilbur Holland had 16, Scott May a total of 12, Theus six, and Mickey Johnson a total of two. So as you look at this game, it was an uphill struggle all the way for Chicago. It started out with Denver jumping to an 11-4 lead. Then all of a sudden, it was 16-14 as the Bulls came fighting back. After one quarter action, it was 24-20, a four-point lead for Denver. And then at halftime, Denver made a run as they led by 21 at the intermission, 57-36. And then Chicago playing very good defense, very aggressive on the boards, cut it to nine points at the third quarter mark, and it was finally 75-64 before Denver made their move once again and put this game away. So after Chicago won the first two, it was Denver here today, and Denver now moving their record to 28-24. and They started the afternoon three and a half games behind the surprising Kansas City Kings. Okay, so we've had quite a basketball game here, reminding you that next Sunday we'll have another dandy coming, the NBA All-Star Game. Now we're going to go to the New Jersey Nets Phoenix Suns game. Brent Musburger and Rod Hundley, let's join them. And Earl says 24 second clock. Welcome those who you've watched the Bulls lose to Denver. You're watching a controversy here in Phoenix. Assistant coach Al Bianchi of the Suns is up. As the shot clock went off on a Phoenix shot, there was a disagreement among the officials. Phoenix does not get the field goal. Earl Strom, the senior official, ruled that it had expired. It's his call outside, 109-106. Super John makes it a one-point game. The New Jersey Nets had fallen out of this contest, and they have clawed their way back into it at a minute 49. And John Williamson, Brent, has hit four consecutive field goals. He has been the man. He was cold for a while, but has come back to lead the Nets. Off the bench with 31 points, Williamson. Davis now outside. Tap it's a three-point lead. One minute and 35 seconds left in the game. A three-point Phoenix lead with the Nets in control. A 25-point afternoon by Alvin Adams. 111-108, the lob back to Bernard King. Chance yes. for the three-pointer. That counts, great move by King. He has been stymied all afternoon, but that's his second field goal here in the last couple of minutes. Again, a fine offensive move going to the right side, drawing the foul, the basket counts, and he can tie it. We've got a minute and 24 left. And here is King with 19 points. He was 2 of 11 at halftime. He sat out a long time in the second half. And now he has come back. He should be well rested. John Williamson has hit 11 of 23 shots for the Mets, and we're tied at 111. With the minute 15 to go, John McLeod now up for the Suns. Williamson all over Boozy. Here's Adams to the left. It's Westfall. Johnson for the rebound in New Jersey can take a lead here. He wants a 20-second injury timeout. He's through his shoe. He's going to have a timeout for his shoe. <laughs> Go over and lace it up. It'll be all right. Maybe Jan is hurt a little bit. He's limping slightly. The trainer, along with Kevin Lockery, will come out and take a look at him. That's Fritz Massman there, the trainer, along with Lockery. I believe he is shaken up. A lot of times that will happen, though. A player, they want that timeout. The coach will wisely say, hey, fake it. 
I know act like their ankle, whatever, and uh, get that 20-second blow that they need. He is out. Boynes, King, Johnson up front. Williamson and Jordan tied at 111. Inside of a minute here in Phoenix. Here's Bernard King backing in on Robinson. Double team now. Goes back. Jordan battles to save it. Loose ball. Boosie. There's the break for the Suns. Here comes Westfall with 47 seconds to go on the turnover. Bernard King trying to save it. Loose ball. The Suns burn him. We're going to take a timeout. That, that King's pass was really bad. Jordan was open out there, but he bounced it about four feet wide of him. And Jordan could not get to the ball in time. What a break. And Westfall with a left-hand dunk has put the Phoenix Suns back up by two. 43 seconds remaining in the game. Here was the pass. King, he had Jordan way out there. No one near him. He threw it on the sideline. He saved it. But watch the Suns go. Boozy, perfect feed to Westfall. Slam dunk coming your way with a left hand. Take it to him from and Southern Cal. There is a man you will see next Sunday on CBS when we take you to Pontiac, Michigan for the NBA All-Star team. The best in the West against the best in the East. And you couldn't ask for a better ending than we've had right here this afternoon in Phoenix. There's Kevin Lockery, who has done a magnificent job with the Nets this year. All of a sudden, he's refilled his pen. He's got a lot of ink working now. Now, his club's back in there. They have played Super Bowl. 43 seconds left in the game. And the one thing you got to look for here is a possible quick shot by the Nets. Reason being, you got the 24-second clock, and that would assure you of getting the ball back for two tries. Now, if you elect to run the clock down and let it get inside that 24-second after a miss, then your, uh, the Suns would try to control the ball. So what they, I think they would like to do is get a quick shot, a good one, and then play the tight defense and then perhaps get the last shot of the game. 43 seconds left here in Phoenix. Tomorrow night's lineup on CBS, MASH, WKRP in Cincinnati, and the corn is green. That's tomorrow night. Here this afternoon in Phoenix, we've got 43 seconds. It'll be the Nets ball, a chance to tie it. They're going to line up that four-man picket fence right at the top of the circle. Now, let's break off of that. The important thing here is to get the ball inbound. Just a tough pass for pressure. Phoenix blew a 23-point lead in this game. Jordan back to Williamson. 39 seconds. Time remaining, lower right-hand corner. Super John to the basket. Threw it up high, and in. we're tied. 34 seconds. Now it's time for John McLeod and the Phoenix Suns to set a play, and they still cannot use all of the time. The Nets realize right now that they're going to get the basketball back. Precisely uh, what I explained a moment ago, Brent. Get the quick shot, but make sure it's a good one. Williamson beat Don Boozy, the Suns' top defensive guard, went down the alley and used his muscular frame to ward off the efforts of the defensive Suns who switched to him, put it up high on the board and got the field goal. Now McLeod, now the pressure goes his way to look for a basket, but a score tied at 113 and 34 seconds left. So John Williamson off Lockery's bench. A total of 33 points here this afternoon. King, who was sluggish, has now come on. A total of 20. 18 for fast Eddie Jordan out of Rutgers. And 8 for the rookie from San Francisco, Winford Coyne. At the Phoenix end, Truck Robinson 12, but he has been quiet in the second half. Davis with 25 points. Adams with 25. One of the problems when you have a deep bench and you substitute as much as John McLeod, it is sometimes difficult for players to regain their rhythm. And Phoenix has had that trouble here. I had to pick the right five guys that you would like to bring back in that final 34 seconds. Welcome those of you who have watched the Washington Knicks game. There's the final, 122 to 105. The Bullets down the Knicks. Here with 34 seconds to go, it's New Jersey 113, Phoenix 113. It'll be Phoenix basketball. Paul Westfall will trigger in. They got Boozy in the backcourt with him. Truck Robinson is out of the game with 34 seconds. A bit of a surprise. Scott and Davis going. You would think that John might want the rebounder out there in this situation, but he has elected to go for Scott. Adams out high. Here's Walter Davis going back to Adams. Quick pass inside. Davis was short. Well defensed on that play. 16 seconds left now. New Jersey can win the game right here with the last shot. Kevin will bring him over to set it. He's got 11 seconds. 
No time, of course, left on the shot clock. They got it inside of 24, so they can expire. They're going to get the last shot. Who are you going to have a net victory or perhaps even overtime? What a comeback. At halftime, it was 57 to 39 Phoenix, and you would think that the Suns were going to blow them right out of the Coliseum here in Arizona, but uh, they've come back. They've taken their time, and Kevin Lockery benched with Bernard King, and that's when things started going. Winfrey Boynes came in off the bench, did a great job, and let's get the X's and O's going over there. Kevin, get a battle. He's looking for a victory here, which will be a big one. This is the first of eight consecutive games on the road for the New Jersey Devils. And they're playing one of the best basketball clubs in the NBA. Maybe Williamson or penetration like we did last time. I think you don't want to do that. Huh? Yeah. I would turn him as much as you can now. If, if you turn him, he may pick the basketball up or may try to, since they're clearing sides, uh, the passing lane's going to be open. We may be able to get in there and get a steal. Don't let him get it. Think that's right. I get up and push the guy that's inbound to the ball. I'd really get up and push him hard now. See if we can, uh, we can get everybody up, Alvin. I wouldn't let them do what Sam Top yeah. now. If you have to, oh yeah, we've got time. Yeah. Of the clock. I don't, I don't know whether they have any time after that. I'd get up and really push them. And you have one. one. We don't want the four. Just two fewer games, and they won all last season. And they did it with their star player in a slump much of the game. He finally found the right combination. And they clawed their way back into this. They got shooters in there with the big rebounder, George Johnson. In the case of a miss, points is a fine shooter. King's in. John Williamson will be the logical choice to try and get this shot, 11 seconds. And here's, the again, the most important pass is the first one to get it inbounds against pressure. And if they make a mistake, the Suns will burn it. Westfall so quick defensively. Here is Williamson, inside of 10 seconds now. Boozy on him. Super John muscles in. The shot's up. It's good with five seconds. The Suns have time. The Suns have time at five seconds to tie this game up. Super John Williamson. And Kevin Lockery says five seconds left. I can't believe it. He said more time had to expire than that. He's now yelling at Strom. We had 11 seconds. We had to use we'll more time. The line now, okay? We've got a timeout. Strom we is over right checking with the time. The we'll line. check. Okay. But the Nets can now. stage an amazing victory. Now that I want you to be right here. The Miller people promised me a case of light beer if I could keep this ball spinning for the length of this commercial. Now, I'm not one to show off, but I do just about anything for a few light beers. You see, light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling, so I can stay loose. But the thing I like best is the taste. And I believe at this time that somebody here owes me a case of that taste. Thanks a lot, boys. See you around. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hi, Charlie. This is it. This is it, America. New Chevrolet. America, if you're looking for a full-size car that goes easy on the gas. This is it. And easy on the road. This is it. A car with all kinds of room inside. This is it. The new Chevrolet, a new generation car bought and embraced by more than a million people in its first two years. Caprice and Impala for 1979. This is it, America. New Chevrolet. But then break out to get the ball from Don. Okay, John. Now McDonald's when you'll have your eyes on the line, you take one Phoenix step up and go into the low post now. Five. And if you can't go there, Don, then, then you either go to Paul or go to Paul. One time out left now. Yeah. One so, Hot Rod Hundley, we get together and right away we'll catch a great game. Unbelievable comeback by those amazing New Jersey Nets. Kevin Lockley just would not let them quit. Here's where you're going to keep the ball out of the corner. Phoenix, that's where the Nets want to drive him. Right there it goes, down in the corner. Adams waiting. Opposite to Truck Robinson, who's come back. And there was a foul call. He'll get two free throws. We're in the penalty. One plus the penalty for Truck. He has been an amazing, awkward free throw shooter of late. He had a string broken of 18 consecutive free throws, but basically, uh, throughout his professional career, in his fifth season, he is not a good free throw shooter. Yet, he has really improved this season. The man who recently cost Phoenix four first round draft choices misses the first free throw. Three seconds left. He's good. Now what do you do? Miss it intentionally and go for the rebound or try and make it and then tighten up on the defense. Look at the position he takes. Now moves the right foot up, hits it. It's a one point game and three seconds. They get it into Williamson who covers up. Adams bounces into him in the backcourt. He had the ball. Backcourt foul. And Eddie Jordan. Phil Jackson over on the bench. Crowd starting to leave in Phoenix. 
the Nets with an incredible performance here. They've got this one. There's no way. There's one second left. John Williamson at the line in the penalty. Even if he misses, the fact it may even be better to miss. The clock moves when the ball hits the rim on the second free throw. If he makes it, it will not stop. Uh, it will not start with the clock until the ball's in bounds. With a two-point game in one second, exactly correct, Todd Rod. If he misses here and rolls off the side, it's all over. That's all he has to do. It's history. The Mets have won it. Time out. And the last timeout is used. And the only hope they have, of course, is for a three-point play. But in the timeout, Kevin will say, stay back. Don't even get up close on anybody right now. I think he's looking for rope over there. He's going to tie all their hands behind him. You right, five now sit up. right here next to me <laughs> and let Phoenix <laughs> throw it in. Let's this see if we has been an uh, amazing victory and a very upsetting loss, I'm sure, for John McLeod with the Nets leading 117 to 114 and only one second right here on CBS. Owens Corning would like to help you understand insulation R values. R stands for resistance to heat flow. It's the right way to measure insulating power, not thickness. Look, it takes about 18 feet of stone to give you an R value of R19, but only 15 inches of wood and six inches of this Owens Corning fiberglass insulation. So check for R value. The higher the R value, the greater the insulating power. Want to know about insulation? Ask the experts. Ask Owens Corning. There's a whole new direction, a whole new point of view. Everybody's out and going, doing what they love to do. That's why now you'll find the age of 7-Up is here. Because we love that crisp, refreshing taste, so light and crystal clear. Moving up, riding up, looking up, sailing up. America is turning 7-Up, reaching up, hiking up, up. feeling up, biking up. America is turning 7-Up. In the second half, the Nets have outscored the Suns 78 to 57. And Williamson off the bench with 37 points. There's the pass, the lob high, tap back and in, it's over. The New Jersey Nets 117, the Phoenix Suns 114. After Phoenix built a 23 point lead in this game. And our most valuable player award, Hot Rod, has to go to John Williamson. He has played outstanding. I'll go along with that, Brent. He had 37 points. He's come off the bench the last two games. He had 25 Friday night against New Orleans and a 110 to 104 victory. 37 here this afternoon. He may become the best six man in basketball. So the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award goes to John Williamson of New Mexico State. The Chevrolet $1,000 scholarship will be awarded to New Mexico State on behalf of John Williamson. Our thanks to Perry Smith and Sandy Grossman for their work here in Phoenix. Chuck Milton back in the Cord studio in New York. And of course, next week on CBS at 1.45 p.m. Eastern Time, it is the NBA All-Star Game, the best in basketball. Now, stay tuned for the Andy Williams San Diego Open. Hot Rod Hundy, a pleasure to have you on my side, big guy. Great to be We'll see you in Detroit. I'm This is CBS. CBS Sports proudly presents the PGA Tour. From the Torrey Pines Golf Course in La Jolla, California, CBS Sports presents...
1979 Andy Williams San Diego Open. Sponsored by Chevrolet and Chevrolet Dealers Coast to Coast. Michelob Light. It's simply a matter of good taste. And by Goodyear, the makers of Tiempo Radials, the tire that eliminates the winter tire changeover. Hi, everybody. This is Vin Scully. Welcome to Torrey Pines in La Jolla, California, and a pleasant good day to you wherever you may be.